Zero podcast is powered by you. And if you want to support us, you can do so via Patreon. Just head to patreon.com forward slash Xbox Era. And as a thank you for your support, you get cool stuff and we get to keep doing what we do. Now let's get into it. Hello friends and welcome to episode 116 of the Xbox Zero podcast. I'm Sigma Mechanico and I'm joined as usual by special Nick. What's going on? It's been a while, man. I haven't said so we've had a week yeah, off, you know, it's, it's, I feel, I feel week weird. Off was weird. I do feel strange, weird. but we're, we're not alone. We're not alone today. We've got, we've got mm. friends. We've got friends. Uh, joining yes. us today is Joe. Uh, he is the PR lead for the studio making hypercharged which um has been out on pc and switch for a while now right and this was your first ever game as a studio as a team is that correct uh technically no we do actually oh. have another one uh, it's a virtual reality game called oh, okay. uh, new retro arcade neon but the very first one we did was it was new retro arcade neon a virtual reality game but it was not a commercial product it was a free sort of download Oh, can can we not count that then? Because I had this down as the debut title, according to my I mean, research, technically, so. it was more... It, we won't count that. Hypercharge is like the the original sort of... The proper one for us. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. Fair enough. But it's, it's great to have you, Joe. Thank you for joining us. And and yes. as, as you may have noted, Internet, a fellow Brit. So feel our joint pain at having to stay up really late because the Australian's on. Hi, Nick. Um, it's been yeah. a while. Hey, I'm up um, at I'm up at eight AM here. Don't forget. Hey That's man, we're giving we're giving up our Saturday night. We could be out partying and you know having Whatever. fun. And instead, I'm a bit old being... for that now. <laughs> I've got the... Don't exactly. don't burst the dream. Come on, we, we, we still got it. We've still got it. Um, so Joe, Hypercharged has has been in the news a bit recently, and um, it's weird timing, right? And I know Nick probably mm. can mention a bit about this. It is weird timing that we've got you on because we've been chatting, or at least Nick has been chatting to, to you guys yeah. for a while. I think we did a review of Hypercharge, the Steam version, quite some time ago because, like a lot of people, we see it and we're like, toys, first-person shooter, cool. And, and you know, yeah. in the viral kind of clips that you see get people's attention. So we went and took a look, and I, I know that Nick has been pestering to get on, but then recently you've kind of been a bit viral yourself on Twitter via Hypercharged, and now you're here. So um, I kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit because you, you went through a little bit of a journey over the last few weeks. Do you, are you happy to kind of preamble and, and give us the lowdown on that? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll uh, try and... Uh keep it concise uh, <laughs> I, I will i will put it I'm, I'm i'm renowned for even though it's my job i'm terrible like at recollecting or telling stories <laughs> it's fine you can't so, take you can't take any less time than nick does so <laughs> all right, all right you know, you, you're in good company so don't don't that's feel bad <laughs> yeah so um just a little bit of background then i'll i'll the people watching i'll go into watch um so where digital cyber is we're a five-man uh indie team and uh yeah hypercharge start, started in 2015 so it's really taken seven years to get to this wow. point where we are now and um funny enough the original vision of version of hypercharge when we were working on it in 2015 was more predominantly focused on like a pvp shooter mm. uh, still action figures but um, yeah. it didn't really have any cooperative gameplay and sort of moving on to 2016 we kept obviously working on the game and i think it you know probably because of a bit of lack of experience still and whatnot and not knowing where to the full directions to go because sometimes the indie developers or developers well, more so indie developers you lose a bit of you can lose a bit of direction of where you want to take your product like is that a little I, bit of like feature creep like this would yeah, be cool and then you'll spend yeah. four weeks like making a cool thing and then go, oh, it doesn't we really feature work. creeped a lot oh dear and, yeah um so um it was like we had to get to a point where it's like okay we're gonna have to chop some things down here and see what we want to keep and what we want to remove 
So we uh, had someone come on who took the lead of sort of took direction of the game, um, and um, we started working uh, towards an early access version of Hypercharge for the next year. But then it completely changed to the original, a second original. Gets a bit messy, but the second original version of Hypercharge. So which was like the the, the wave base. Yeah. So it's gone from PvP, pure PvP, to uh, cooperative wave based. And then we, it was a little bit of um, a hard time during that year, if from the transition from 2016 to 2017. Um, long story short, I won't go into too de- detail about that. We uh, relaunched the game uh, out of early access on a Steam summer sale, the worst possible time to do it. Uh, um and it just i've heard we, this before yeah we got <laughs> absolutely no traction and you know i'll put my hands up i was still learning with, with marketing you know and stuff um but it, it wasn't necessarily it was all of our we were all to not blame but um be a reason for why that happened yeah and unfortunately at that time and i missed something crucial here um at the time we were so so when the other guy came on and took lead we ended up having a four more members on the team four yeah. or five so it might be 10 of us all together so um when it all failed in you know, lx 2.0 the new people who had previously joined all left so the original ones the five of us were there like uh what do we oh, do now wow yeah it was it wasn't nice and i forgot to say something else at this time um i was see by Technically, by trade, I'm a painter and decorator. I left yeah. school at 15 into the, into the family business. And I was doing all this, like, you know, similar to what you guys have just said, you know, plowing every minute into it. You know, you, you know how it is. You put, you put your heart and soul into it. Yeah. And I was still doing that. And so one of the other two of us, I think, were working full time jobs as well. So, because we're, we're basically, you know, putting that money into the game. Yeah. You're, you're, you're working. Studio. You're working every hour, burning the candle at both ends to try and realise a passion. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Completely understand. Yeah, we're doing so, the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's rewarding, but you know, it's, it's it's difficult. Yeah. Um. So we decided we had to think. We couldn't. We had two options. Do we listen to the little feedback we have? You know, good feedback, and uh, progress with the game, or do we abandon it? And then we'll probably have to collapse the company because it would cost. Basically, it would have cost more money to start on another game. It yeah. wouldn't have been viable. So we we were kind of left with this sort of mess of a game. And we, the way I describe it is like we had to almost, uh, what is it, uh, like. A turd rolled in diamonds, so to speak. <laughs> As like, my father would say, there's only so much lipstick you can put on a pig. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's a good analogy. So that's what it was kind of like. Um, and then, um, yeah, we um, that version of Hypercharge, literally 90, I'd say 99.9% of its DNA the code, the audio design, the animations, the the enemies, the models, the environments, everything we just reworked, recoded. So it was very much like we 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 as five developers really changed everything, and we did that over the next year. You know, moving wow. to 2018. So I had the idea of, you know, we we're in early access. Nobody knows about the game. What do we do? So from a marketing point of view, I was like, well. We need to create a big buzz somehow. So mm. um, action figures, I still we still believe action figures are cool. We still believe there's a mm. trend out there. We knew we had the aesthetic of the game. You know, it looks amazing for it. So we're like, right, let's do something called Early Access 2.0. So, a, so re-releasing in a way into Early Access again. We, we technically wasn't, but that's how we were going to, that's what the announcement was. We would, for the next year, say, would do development blogs, everything, you know, this is early access 2.0. We've listened to your feedback and these are the changes and we'd keep trying to hype it up and hype it up. And in fairness, it did work. You know, we made the front page of Reddit a few times. I don't know if you're familiar with Imgur at the time. That was definitely, Mm -hmm. it was really popular back then. We made the front page of that like 30 times. Um, It did. So we kept building a little bit of a fan base, nothing like what's happened now by any means, 
but we got to i think it i don't know the the, the month but it was 2018 we uh had the established version of hypercharge which we think is pretty good so um we launched it um and it did it did better than we we made more sales and got more coverage um releasing access a second time than the first time which That's is good. unheard of because you do get a bit of a, a push with um back then you did anyway when you launched into an early access title you get some sort of visibility mm-hmm. um so that was amazing i think we even got into rock paper shotgun which was funny and then we were like oh that's cool then you know a little bit of a lifeline um you know after all what happened so then we spent the next 2019 yeah we spent the next year and a half maybe or two years you know listening to feedback as we do kept improving the game but again what was difficult for us is that going back to the hypercharging with the, with the uh, dime of the turds or the lipstick analogy <laughs> <laughs> the, the, we couldn't there's now i can't technically exp- explain it like deck the lead programmer could but because we were le- we were left we had been the game had been given to us in such a state there's lots of things technically or mechanically we wanted to implement into the game like there's like there's loads of cool ideas we wanted to do like the original original version we had but unfortunately because of the way of how things were done on the back end in the unreal engine it, you know, it's not just a case of, oh, click this button and do this and it'll work. Mm-hmm. It means it, if we do this one thing, it'll mess up a bunch of other things. Yeah. So um, we um, were kind of limited from a design point of view with how, what, how many ideas we could put into the game, which was unfortunate, but, you know, we've done our best. But that's why we can't add all these, because we'd love to add, like, superpowers and all this other cool <laughs> stuff, you know, action figure stuff, but we just can't. Um so yeah moving on to that transition from from then it was getting a little bit difficult for us we're finding it hard financially so it was like you know it's an, a second time it was like what we're going to do you know steam we were struggling on steam loads yeah and um we were like right can we get this game then on the nintendo switch because more so back then um first first person shooters weren't really like as predominant on that platform mm. yeah there weren't yeah, many 100%. decent ones with like you know gyro um or anything like that um excuse me so we we're like can we do it and people don't realize but to get a game like ours working on nintendo switch was a miracle like it was a phenomenal <laughs> task like because you got to think like how do you get it so performant how do you get all the the control scheme working and there's so much from a technical point of view what was involved in and it deck. looks quite pretty on the it, it, oh, mm. it, it it's been like so it runs at we call it true 30 fps because a lot of games say it's 30 fps and it's actually not but ours is true 30 fps so it's yeah. very smooth compared to other games um but it, it's been yeah it, it got on many articles like one, it's they, they called it one of the best looking games i've ever seen um which was nice so um yeah props which version to, uh, of unreal does it use uh, unreal engine 4 so people it think four. it's a- okay. actually uh five so um mm. we um yeah we uh get amazing got it working and then we launched 2020 onto the switch and honestly the switch was a saving grace for us because again with we would have had to have collapsed the team at this point i'm still decorating Ulrich, you know, the, the, he's the order of the designer, but he's also the, the managing sort of director of the company. He was working somewhere else, and we were all like a family business sticking together. Um, yeah. And mm. then, but luckily, we managed to hype up the Switch version a bit. We got some good pre orders, and we launched, yeah, January 2020, and we became in the UK charts, uh, we got in the top 20, 20, 20, 20 top sellers. And it gave us just a lifeline, you know, like I said before. And then we kept focusing on the Switch. And it was doing pretty well compared to Steam. It was mountains and leagues above, honestly. Yeah. like it was mm-hmm. through, In relative terms to us, you know, it wasn't that we were millionaires, nothing like that. It was just we could do what we love working on games and earn a little bit of money. And mm-hmm. then, obviously, COVID hit. Oh. So, but, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> which gets everybody. But it's going to, I don't mean this like... Um, in a in a bad way but for us it was and yeah it was like a, a blessing in disguise and i hope nobody takes that the wrong way it was awful but I'm, no. I mean, 
I mean more like everybody was at home, and in a way we could help people. Because we could yeah. Just give if them people the were putting furlough and stuff like that over here in the UK, well, I'm not allowed in someone's house, so I'm kind of earning, but I can actually concentrate on the job I really love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I kind of, exactly. I kind of get it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so that happened, and then I should have a bit of water. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like an origin story. I, um, it's, it's quite <laughs> thrilling, to be honest with you. I mean, it's like, and I'm not embellishing or exaggerating anything. I think things actually were actually much worse that I'm uh, missing out. Like, um, oh, sorry, guys, could I just do one thing here? Yes, of course. I just you... because we've we've just oh, I get a bit emotional. We're just um, officially a top seller on the front page of Steam. I'm just saying. So. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, wow. I can't believe that. I'm just going to quickly tell my partner, if you don't mind. Because it's, no, 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 go for it. I'll be 30 seconds. Go for it. <laughs> I mean, like, i I got to admit, this is, it's, I, I, really, I really feel for this team, right? Because, mm. you know, and I, I kind of, I feel some kinship because, you know, if we look across what this team does, predominantly all different jobs all across the globe, just doing the best that we can. And, you know, when it when it comes through like that and you get these kind of cool mm. moments, like you think back to when Phil dropped on episode 100, like guaranteed when that was a lock, we were like, go look at this, you know, like, and you can see that same joy, like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, you know that thing that you get really cross with me for spending so much time on? How, how are you feeling right now? Because, like, you look pretty hyped. You look pretty hyped right now. I'm holding in tears, to be honest. Uh, people are messaging me, so I'm sorry if I'm looking away. Uh, no, no, you, dude, you're all good. Like, this is a, um, a pretty important <clears> moment. Yeah, it's just, honestly, it's um, it's been so incredibly difficult to get here. Um, mm. And I'll try and keep on track where I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll start crying. Um, <clears throat> I forgot where I went now. <laughs> so well, I'm glad it's happened with COVID, you guys. It's nice yeah, it was, we're talking about COVID hitting and oh, how so, it yeah, sort so, of actually was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And... So um, COVID, um, <laughs> COVID hit and then people's, people at home and then it was getting to a point where, yeah, it was nice switch, but we were sort of still struggling a bit. You know, it was like, oh, we know we, we've got to, we can't keep, there's only so much the money, can, you know, money don't go on trees. And I always did, talking about Steam, I was always an advocate of, and I always knew um, that Steam is a sleeping giant for a lot of developers. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, it gets sometimes a bad rep for things, but, you know, um, it, it's, an, it, it's an amazing platform and you can have amazing opportunities on it. If you, you get, you get out what you put in and in all fairness to steam and valve are some of the nicest people i've ever met in terms of support um you know but you, you can't just go to them and say hey my game's got mixed reviews and i've sold 200 copies can you put them on the front page of course not but if you put in <laughs> I mean, the work nice. yeah exactly <laughs> and I'll, and this will make sense in a bit but um we i kept saying to the team look because most of the team, and they'll admit this, they were like, nah, Steam, let's forget it. But I was, I was always like, and with all the business partner, I was always like, look, can't give up on Steam. We've got to try, you know, because at this point, we'd garnered on Steam, like, because I always did my best to keep up with the reviews, help, you know, the customers on Steam and keep people updated. We ended up, we had a high score in it. And um, we had a few, and we had a few sales or whatever. And then um, I was like, look, so it got to about near April, and it was weird, and I, it's going to sound cringy, but I've I've always thought like somebody's looked over us or me because weird things happen, and um, I was like, look, because they used to actually call me, they used to call me the, the viral king, because <laughs> it, honestly, it's true. I used to say like I get these viral tingles, so when I'm recording a gameplay clip or I'm seeing something, I, I see it and I'm like, this is going to go viral, and it happened dozens of times. It's weird. And um, I said to the guys, like, I had this really good gameplay footage. And I was like, look, guys, I've got this feeling. It was a week before we was going to leave Early Access. I've got a feeling that today's the day that I should post this on Reddit and Imja. And um, I think I think it's something's going to happen. And they're like, yeah, well, we trust you, Joe. And at this point, we had about 40,000 ish wish list. Now, according at that time, according to Valve from, I think, talks at GDC, um, they would, uh, sorry, I'm just close this, cl close this down. Just let me close, sorry, two seconds, I'll just close this chat down. I'm getting too much. 
<laughs> Guys, don't you know I'm, I'm live sorry. right now? I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. Um, don't worry. Make sure I uh, I tweeted the link for us guys as well. Did I tweet we, we, it out? Yeah, I think you did. And did you, uh, we, you retweeted we, it out. Je- Jesse, uh, Jesse had okay, the, brilliant. Yeah, Jesse had the glo- global top sellers list up on the on the YouTube channel as well while we were chatting. So, <laughs> oh, really? Did you? Yeah. Like, Is it there for you? Can you see it? It's there, yeah, it's there for us. Yep. Yeah. He threw yeah, it up the, on the, the screen third while we top were game. Wait, where's this? Sorry, wait, wait, wait. I need to see this. The third. <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube, like Jesse can switch across. Oh, let, yeah, let, sorry. Let me get it. Let me have a look at this. Uh, <laughs> getting palpitations, like God, and I've, I've got you know, I've got to be careful with my heart. Um, wow, it has, look at that. It's it's right underneath Elden Ring. You know, the game of the year, according to many publications. It's just below that, mate. Hold yeah. on, I'm just getting it up now. Oh, I'm getting nervous. I can't, That's a honestly, screenshot. I feel like I'm going to wake up and it's not real. <laughs> and, you know, for folks watching, and I, I, I kind of, you know, maybe... Oh, Joe, wow, you, look at it there. Maybe Joe <laughs> can segue this into into one of the things that you were talking about earlier on. But what you're funny. seeing you on the screen sounded, is... You almost sounded like Pepper just then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, whose screen am I watching? <laughs> It almost sounded like Peppa. It reminded me of Peppa. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think what um, you're seeing could... is super infectious. It's so it's so cool to see <laughs> how happy you are watching this. Oh, no, thank you. Awesome. I say it's awesome experiencing with, with you. Um, could, could you do me a favor? Um, screen grab this. Could, no, yeah, no. Could somebody on the screen, I'm watching the screen. Sorry, I can't, I can't see your name. I've forgotten. Could you just go to the uh, featured and recommended and see if it's popping up for you there? Do you know when you go yeah. on the homepage of Steam? Uh, I, I can do that. Featured and recommended. You know, uh, if you scroll across the thing. Discovery queues. Yeah. Recommended, ready or not, Elden Ring. Hypercharge Unbox is there in featured and recommended for me. Oh, you got to screenshot that and tweet I'll, I'll it. it <laughs> I'll yeah. retweet it. <laughs> I can't believe this has happened now. It's pretty cool. I mean, climbing again. You know, maybe you yeah, are the viral time, geek. You know, you, you, you jumped on this podcast and boom. You knew yeah, it was the right time. You guys, this this happened. Happened. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take I'll it. I'll tell you what will happen is, right, we'll do this. When we um, get to it, um, because you, and I won't forget it as well, like you got, you were the first ones to reach out from Xbox, like as in a news sort of site. Mm. When we get to our launch, we'll do something like a few hours before and we'll get on, we'll try and organize a podcast. Um, that'd be cool. That'd be, that'd be awesome, that. We'd yeah. love to. Um, yeah, that'd no, be awesome. I, but, I, I, I remember ages ago, just I can't remember how I saw one of your tweets. I think someone retweeted it or liked it, so it came up on my feed like ages ago. And I saw the clip and I'm like, oh my God, this game looks so cool. So I started following the account. I think I DM'd you. I'm like, oh my God, this game looks cool. And da 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 da. And then from way back then, I can't even remember how long ago it was there. It must have been close to a year or so. Yeah, it must have been, yeah. And I'm like, oh, we'd love to get you guys on the show yeah. and yada, yada, yada. It's like we've been going back and forth. You joined the Discord and it's just funny, the timing of it all, that you jumped on <laughs> this week of all weeks. It was actually, Joe was actually going to jump on last week. Yeah. But, and then, then of we course, didn't do <laughs> we yeah. didn't do the show. Um, but yeah, so the timing worked out really, really well. And, yeah, absolutely. you know, you were, you were kind enough to give me way too many codes. I don't know why you gave me so many codes, but you got uh, Forbear to review it. Uh, and I think he gave it eight out of 10. He did, I want to say. Yeah, he yeah. Had a lot of fun. A good score as well, because it's going to be, I mean, I'm being biased. I think it'll be near 10 out of 10 by the time it comes out on Xbox. <laughs> hey, let's, we'll have um, to do an Xbox specific review, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, hey, we're on Metacritic now, so... Oh really? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we just we just recently got onto Medicare. Well, I'll tell you what, really when good. I do the promos for it, right? If we can get you access, I'll put you as the because uh, I did this with uh, <laughs> switch up for switch. I'll have your 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 name everywhere, Xbox. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I did no, I I, I I I believe in doing that. Like you, you you know, it's um, it's like when smaller websites reach out to me, I I always give them keys. Smaller YouTubers because you know we're all sort of there once and mm. um like and the passion that goes into like what what you guys are doing as well you can see it and feel it like and i'm not just saying that because i'm excited you know this is why i'm on with you guys (laughs) 
Well, it's interesting, right? Because watching your reaction to all of that was was very wholesome. I have to say, it's probably been <laughs> been one of the one of the parts of the week that's made me smile, genuinely smile. But it, what I wanted to say was, you could see a very human reaction, and you know, I think skipping twenty twenty and heading into recently the last couple of weeks. A lot of people seem to forget that there are actual human beings that make games. They have mm. feelings and uh, mm. thoughts and, you know, dreams and wishes, and they can get hurt by words and cruelty and meanness. And I think you did a tweet that ended up going a bit viral just because you were just like, this is, this is ridiculous because yeah. you're just doing mm. your job as in here is this game we are making. We want you to enjoy it. And people are being oh. less than pleasant yeah no and, yeah what what happened there because you know i think you put a tweet out and it kind of just exploded yeah. a little so, bit and you weren't really tweeting about the game at this point right no no so like at this point it was it was now and then so what had happened is um what i'll do is i'll i'll, I'll get to that i'll quickly finish what you know to build to it what was the saga because i derailed it i apologize and then no, it's quite so, right. so, so it'll all connect and it makes sense um so um once we um so once we were gonna leave early access with hypercharge um there was a thing that val would said and it was like a you know a, an overall thing everyone would, would de developers would say and valve did at gdc a talk that 50 wish lists is like a good average to have to, to you know do well on steam and obviously for indie developers who are like huh? i've only got like 20 wish lists but luckily because i've been doing so much marketing dedicated to it i got us to like forty thousand. so when i had this feeling i was like guys like i feel like and because the idea was i was going to do the marketing all on the actual day the bulk of it um but i had i wanted to do it before and the reason was i got this feeling i was like look I think we can get us to these 50,000, this gold. It was, it was classed as like the golden number more back then. So um, I ended up um, doing a Reddit post. It went, made the front page of Reddit. And then Imager, front page of Imager, a few other things happened. And what was funny is, so we went some of the, some Twitch streamers, it's a very old school tactic, you know, and um, there's some big, some of the biggest Twitch streamers in the world. I would just went on with my account and like, hey, you see, in our game, by the way, he plays action figures, and he played it for three hours. Wow. I messaged somebody else, and pretty much within the same hour, he played it for about two hours. But when he played it at the time, um, I, I didn't save the clip, and I wish that I did. Um, it went; it was almost scripted at how he played it on the level because they it was for a group of them. You see, so more Twitch mm -hmm. streamers. We had about forty thousand live viewers between and both watching. That's awesome. Um, and then. Um, it just all kicked off and yeah when they were playing it was like they were defeating the big called a demolisher in the game a big bot robotic boss and it was just it they played really well and the the, the listen to how to do the objective it just it, it it couldn't have gone any better so um the next day we had over about 50 just over fifty thousand wish lists we got over ten thousand wish lists just in that one days. day yeah mm. wow so then i was like right let's just do it <laughs> Let's just message Valve, like, what have we got to lose? You know, they're our partner at the end of the day. They want to make money. Let's message mm. them. Sent, sent an email out. Next day, we got an email, a bit like this moment, and such a nice guy from Valve um, messages back and said, you know, hey, Joe, really love the look, really love the look of your game. Um, it's got very positive reviews. You know, it seems like you're putting a lot of work into it. What we'll do is we'll give it a feature for 24 hours. And we'll see how it goes. So I was like, wow. We were Don't like, Don't get yeah, we were like, wow. So on April the 27th, we launched. And it's fun. Yeah, we launched and we were featured there for a day. And we did really well. It wasn't perfect, the game. At the time, you see, we didn't have player bots or third person camera mode then. Wow. A lot of things we didn't even have. But we became Ooh. a top seller. We did well. And it was, an, it was like a third or whatever lifeline. Like, oh, yes. You know, we're on the brink of destruction so many times. And then um, we kept on then. We could really be comfortable. And at that time, I um, it was 2020. I, it was getting, with COVID, it was getting too much for me uh, working. Um, so I 
I get emotional talking about this because it involves my dad. Um, I, I left the family business then uh, because I couldn't keep up with it anymore. Mm. Um, and at the time, my dad hasn't been very ill. He's, he's got um, a tumour on his pituitary gland. Uh, so I was always the one who would look after him a lot at work. So it was inc- it was all it was like I was grieving when I left. It was just but for me, I've always I'm just I'm a very I'm a, I have a lot of empathy and I just I just want to help my family. You know. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. give a crap about fast cars, big houses. Truly, I don't. I just want to, me doing what I love is being rich. So that was a very, very hard for me then. And that's where a lot more mental health stuff came in because I went from leaving work at 15, doing painting and decorating, to then all of a sudden now I'm on my own, you know? Yeah. That's what it felt like. It's a big change. And I couldn't let them know I was upset because I felt like I had to be strong. But um, so that happened. And I started my own, so because, you know, um, and tax reasons and stuff, I had to start my own business. Uh, marketing thing, indie game Joe. So I, I'm under yeah. digital cyber cherries, but you know I have my own sort of marketing business. Yeah. That's what indie game Joe is. And then I was going through all that. You know, all the, we're all going through stuff. It wasn't just me, um, but we kept on plowing updates in the game. We kept listening to feedback again, doing the best we can with this turd. <laughs> and <laughs> we did things like we never thought we'd have player bots from a technical point of view, a mammoth, absolute mammoth task um and then we had a fully working third person camera mode where you know it isn't what wasn't just jankily put in it's done perfectly you can have um change multiple camera options and things like that um and even even more things so then it got to about 2021 and good things kept happening like we'd get on gamescom the virtual thing would get igen features things were slowly like sort of seeing the light and the light at the end of the tunnel and then um 2021 we things were going going okay still you know doing all right activates we could we had a big wish list pool we could activate sales now and then and whatnot but then i think we just yeah kept i think near the back end of 2021 so i can't remember fully if something happened but it might something happened where xbox got caught on to a vi- to a viral tweet this was just one thing i must have tried and it was chris charler who noticed it you know the id <laughs> yeah the xbox, idea xbox he was like, yeah he was like yo joe this looks cool if you need help you know getting this on xbox i was like oh and what is funny is in all fairness my idea was to post and hope that because i know from a marketing point of view these people are looking for games that Always. may do well and yeah. I believe in our products, and it worked. So um, we ended up having a meeting with him, just an amazing guy, and then um, we discussed the plans, what we were doing. So um, we were like, "Wow, this is cool. There's some, there's some real opportunities here." So then we we got back, you know, sat around the round table, and we're like, "Right, the what virtual can we do round with... table." Yeah, virtual. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> what can we do with? Um, what can we do with hypercharge to make it like more um how can we make it more um appealing to a certain audience because what i what i had been finding out is that and it will sound obvious but it wasn't at the time is hypercharge was resonating very well with children and mums and dads and yeah what i mean by that is it's something i've learned from a marketing perspective is hypercharge is very very special in the sense that it has and forgive me if it doesn't make sense uh i like to call it cross generational nostalgia so mm-hmm. we use me for example i'm 30 let's say say i have a kid i grew up in sort of the 90s mid late 80s early 90s we know i've grown up with small soldiers sarge's heroes uh, the borrowers honey i shrunk the kids toy commander these sort of things mm-hmm. and then um, i have that real love and childhood memories of that and, and whatnot and then my kid you know hypothetically is still being brought up with toy story yeah. so that's a connection and also action figures are never going to go out of trend it'll always be a thing until you know yeah. humans don't exist always so it's like that's what i meant by the cross generation generational thing no you can have sense. all that love and nostalgia that is, what a better feeling in a video game that as a parent you can share your childhood with your son or daughter or whatever whoever and um they get to see you sort of happy and share it you know it, it does something special and honestly over the years i've had emails from mothers brothers sisters dads thanking us for that 
Um, it's it's true. I showed yeah. I showed my eight year old uh, this mm. on my PC earlier today. I was like, "Hey, look, you know, we, we're speaking to the guy who made this," and he was like, "You can play as it," and it just blew his mind. And he just went off mm. for about an hour, just completely like, you know, and he wasn't very good at it, but he no. it doesn't really matter. He loved it. he loved it because he was like, "I'm walking around a toy store. This is incredible." Um, oh. He was just he was mind blown. And I think you're absolutely right because as a dad, I'm like. This is cool. I can play as a toy, mm. you know. And Small Soldiers is it, like, how is that IP as a as a movie not back? Like, a, I, in some well, form. I've got a feeling <laughs> if this really kicks off the Xbox, we're going to see Sarge's hero, Army oh. Man, Small <laughs> DLC mm. characters. Yeah. The funny Let's thing go. is, at, at an even more basic level, like I when I showed my wife the game, she was happy just that our six year old could have like an action game that's not gory and super yeah. violent or yeah. like part of the reason he plays Fortnite is because Fortnite's not gory and there's no blood and it's not ultra violent or anything like that. It's just fun. And yeah. this this is the same this is in that same sort of vein. Like yes, it's a shooter, but it's toys and it's yeah. you know it's it's good. It's 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 yeah, really, no, definitely. really good. It's funny you say that because what I do say about hypercharge is um we're not trying to be the next Fortnite, and I'm not Mm-mm. shitting on Fortnite. Or you know, we're not trying to be the next yeah. Call of Duty. They're in their own, you know, um, respective genres, and that's fine. Great games. If you like it, cool. We're not trying to imitate them or be them. I, I'd go as far to say Hypercharge with the type of game mode doesn't really have the com- its own com- competition. Um, what, but what I'm getting at is what we what we're doing with Hypercharge is that we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Mm. We're trying to actually complement it and show that simplicity sometimes can be a good thing, be the best mm. thing. Yeah. And like it's a casual, it's hypercharge is what I would describe it as to somebody. It's a casual shooter um, poured with a massive ball of nostalgia and love. And like, like you said, you know, there isn't any gore or violence. I mean, the toys don't die, they break apart. In fact, mm-hmm. the detail in it, when you fire bullets, you may have not noticed. BB pellets fly out. They're not real bullets. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's very much like um, trying to reenact our childhood memories. So um, that's sort of the vision we, we, we're going with it. And that's what is clearly resonating it. Now, one thing I will say is, and Steam is amazing, obviously, you know what's happening. <laughs> it's powerhouse. Yeah. But I have found now that in my from my experience that steam is actually the worst audience for our type of game and that xbox and maybe playstation 2 and i'm not comparing consoles here it's nothing not a caveat that right no i should yes i totally understand why you are yeah it's, it, it's nothing it's nothing like it's nothing, it's nothing like i imagine everyone jumping on no, it's uh, nothing like that at all um but um, I've lost my train of thought now. What was I saying? Because <laughs> <laughs> I got the Steam console wars stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, Steam, Steam isn't the greatest place if you're an indie dev, right? Because there's so much stuff, yeah. so much stuff all the time released. And you found that Xbox was, and then I presume that you were going to say, we're, we're getting Sorry, yeah, we found that things. Xbox, um, because I've seen it through TikTok, because we had a lot of viral. I'm talking tens of millions of views on TikTok. It's been good for us because the, because the audience is primarily younger yeah um and um, nostalgia beat and not xbox has been again not comparing what's better but it has been the most vocal majority of people yeah. it seems to resonate with them and I, for whatever yeah. reason it was a technical thing is it to do with split screen is it to do with local pot co-op i don't know but whatever it is i just know it has been very vocal from the xbox community um and i think um when we launch on xbox i think hypercharge was tailor-made for it and playstation for consoles in general but you know we'll talk about xbox here but i think it is and i and that's with you look at the proofs in the pudding look at the newsletter subscribers we've had mm-hmm. like what indie developer do you know can get that that amount of subscribers in that time like yeah. for a game i'd love that many um, subscribers I, I think there's still an element <laughs> And people aren't going to, they're not going to like me saying this, but I've copped enough abuse for the last week. What's a little bit more? <laughs> um, 
there's still that element of Xbox still being that home of shooters. As, as much as I know Microsoft wants to ultimately get away from that a little bit, in the end, you can't ignore your legacy. My, yeah. Xbox has yeah. always been the shooter box. From the original Xbox through the 360, Xbox One, thanks to Halo, Gears, all that sort of stuff, Microsoft still has that lineage of being the shooter box. So it, it wouldn't surprise me to see Hypercharge potentially gaining the most traction on that platform just yeah. through that legacy. Like, it, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me at all. Yeah, no, that's that's a very good point you bring up. Um, but it's like you know, with with split screen, people you talk to some. I've talked to some people, and they just think, "Oh, so, you know, who plays split screen?" I know loads of people who play split screen mm. still, but it is becoming way more rare. Get developers, yeah. for yes. whatever reason, aren't implementing it, and we love it. And I think like this is why parents they can play split screen together. It's it's simple. Mm. You don't have to have two different working machines and this and that. Yeah, it's yeah. old school, and again, it it. it glorifies that childhood memory thing like what we used to do yeah um, again mm. what better moment sat next to your kid the same monitor no faffing about you're defending and you're a toy like it's just amazing yeah um mm-hmm. so um yeah and then um what sorry and i did forget what happened so going back to you know 2021 um so uh, before Xbox reached out, we did have another lifeline where we did get some. I see. I tried TikTok at first a few, when it kind of came out, and I was like, I, I don't understand what I'm doing. Like, oh god, you know, I, you know, I was like, isn't good? All I'm these, yeah, like all this sort of like um, weird stuff happening. You know, uh, like you know, soft porn stuff on there, just constantly. We- uh, you know people it was just very weird as like this isn't i don't like this feel uncomfortable yeah. like i don't know how to use this platform so i came off it and then about a year, literally a year later i was like look i'm gonna try it because some of the developers are having success with it and it's big numbers and i ended up yeah building the count up i think we're at four hundred thousand followers in like a year on there now and wow. it did really well and it helped a lot with wish list and sales so um yeah but then early then 2022 after we spoke to chris Charler and whatnot um I started thinking, no, we had that discussion what we're going to do next. And you're going to get the first thing here, actually, what we're working on. Um, so there is, yeah, there is a, we're implementing a story campaign to the I ways of I was going to ask about that. Yeah. So it's not a dedicated campaign. So let's just make that clear because we're too small of a team to make that happen. It's just, yeah, what, yeah. It, what, what it is, it means, so the current objective in Hypercharge as of now is, you have to defend something called the hypercar. And um, that's basically it. But we're adding a story to that now. And mm-hmm. it'll include other things like, uh, for example, optional objectives. So you go on the level. So when you start in hypercharge, you go on the level and you have build mode or exploration mode. And you can just go around, look for secrets, check out the environment. When we implement the campaign, there'll be cool little environments focusing on platform. Like ha- little puzzles, just neat little like, like Toy mm-hmm. Story 2, 1998 type things. Nice. And then and then this is the best part, and I get excited talking about it, is um, <laughs> what's going to, because I think it will just, I think kids will love it. What's going to happen is, um, so I'll try and explain how it happens. You enter the first level, and it pans in sim- the cinematic into like yeah. a 90s inspired comic. It's sat on the bed, goes right in, and um, it goes to each panel like telling you the origin of hypercharge in a way and you know so you get a bit awesome. of background story and it's got like <laughs> it's funny it's got like a, a a very we've got somebody who sounds like david attenborough and it's like once upon a time ago there was a hypercar an ancient line of action figures and um <laughs> so it's talking about the history behind um the, the hypercar what you're defending um and then essentially what it is the guy the, there's an old sort of cool granddad uh, uh, person called Sergeant Max Hammer. I don't know if you've seen him in the game. Um, he gives mm. you like tool tips and um, and whatnot. And um, he, you know, he's like he's like meant to be the guy you look up to. You know, kind of like your granddad in a way, or your dad. That's yeah. the idea. Wrong mm-hmm. with it. You know, he's this wise sort of action figure, a very good person. Um, and um, it's about him. So it's going into the comic panel and 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 um. It's showing you the kid who was actually called Andy <laughs> playing with uh, <laughs> playing with Sergeant Max Ammo, and it sort of pans over to um, his limited edition 
version called Max Sergeant Max Damage. <laughs> and he's a limited edition, but he's never been taken out of the box. He's getting a little bit annoyed about that. Why is why is his <laughs> why is his owner playing with Max Ammo all the time and not him? So he starts to get very envious, and he's explaining all he's this not, really well. He's not going mm. the Stinky Pete route, is he? Because I'm, I'm gonna... I mean, <laughs> you really Maybe. are Stinky Pete. <laughs> That's what I was thinking straight away. <laughs> so um, <laughs> he's getting more and more angry, and um, as it's explaining it in this uh, sort of panel uh, cinematic thing. Um, he, he he comes up with like a plan to mess things up. So what the hypercore is, what you're defending, it's a magical, mystical device that's located around every hum, human's house, you know, bedrooms, kitchens, and um, they contain all of our childhood memories of the action figures. They they are what keep our memories sort of alive. Without the hypercores, if they go, in in a sense, action figures will cease to exist because we won't know about them anymore. So he's so jealous. Mate, um, max damage he breaks out of his packaging and tries to destroy the hypercore in the boys bedroom because he wants to relinquish the memories of he of the good times he's had with max ammo so he tries to do that but he fails and what happens is he gets hit by a surge of energy from the hypercore and that turns him dark and twisted and he turns into major evil so oh then it explains God. yeah it's so good we and so then so then what happens is um th- then then the first hyper war we call it the hyper war happens oh, Sergeant Max Ammo. <laughs> it sounds so much better with hyper in front of it yeah he gets his gets all his young action figure recu- uh, rec- recruits you know he gets his sectoids the cyber furries the valkyries he gets everybody he can because the the hyper core, yeah <laughs> the hyper core <laughs> is so powerful you know it he needs to stop this he, he, he recruits everybody he can and um it t- talks about you know the fight they have and that and whatnot, and he ends up beating um, Major Evil, and and everything, and the, everything sort of goes back to normal. Major Evil goes in hiding, and he thinks it's over. And Max Hamill can finally jo- you know enjoy his retirement because it was a long hype hyper war. And then the very first sort of level um, <laughs> will start with a 15 second intro, some funny sort of clip, and all of a sudden. It's Max Ammo training sort of a young recruit, getting ready to be retired. Some enemies are coming into the room. And he's like, wait, there's only one person who was able to control toys because the hypercar gave him, you know, power to control toys. Because uh, the toys aren't evil. It's just Major Evil's controlling them. And he's uh. like, I have a, I, I have a suspicion there's evil afoot. So then that's where it starts. You're placed in the environment and then it's a linear story. When you do the next mission, you're getting closer to finding out. You're getting closer to Major Evil, and each level will have more bosses. Um, and then you end up fighting Major Evil at the very end. Okay. So, okay. And Spoilers. that is why. Spoilers. Yeah. So that's why. Why are you like, giving away the whole thing? <laughs> the whole I love thing. it. I got caught up in it. You should have stopped me. <laughs> I didn't want to just interrupt you. I'm going now. Rude to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> I love I'm it. I'm gonna get fired. No, it's fine. It's fine. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll. You know, hypothetically, because I'm listening and I'm like, happen. is he just giving away like the entire thing? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> it's a light. It's a light story. It's a light story. Yeah, man. there's lots like, of other things you know, gonna happen. Like, he, yeah, just... like, I'm there. Did I give away the story? <laughs> nah, nah. I don't, <laughs> nah, we, I don't know. It's honestly, it's something we, we'll talk about because I want to get people excited about it. I'd, I'd rather talk about it and let people know what they're in for. Because end that of the day, if fun. it goes mega viral, people aren't going to know the story anyway. You know, because you know, there's so many people who won't see it. But um, that's the idea of it. Um, so it's re- so it's a very no, nineties right. good versus evil again. So and yeah, I yeah. think on Xbox, and this is why you know I didn't as well. We didn't want to give a release date. Um, is because we want to get all this stuff in. We don't want because yeah, first yeah. impressions count. We don't want to launch yeah. an Xbox. And then release major updates afterwards. No, I'm sick of doing that. It's too difficult. To, I don't want to yeah. keep. I don't want like to keep putting doing... the track down in front yeah. of you while the trains come in. You mm-hmm. want to be ready and go on the journey with the full product. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, um, with that being being said, and I hope I, uh, I hope I explained all that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, it brings me on to. Um, yeah, what we had spoken about with the uh, going to 2022 with the uh, viral sort of uh, non-game tweet with... related tweet. 
Yeah, yeah. So up until the point when I experimented with Xbox and realizing all this stuff, um, there was quite a bit of an abuse. Um, we've always had a bit of a cult following with Hypercharge. People just, just a lot of toxicity. Um, and it was getting worse, and it got worse um, with when I was doing the Xbox stuff because it, some tweets, nothing like now, were going quite viral. And uh, these particular gamers want, were just demanding release dates, you know, sending me direct messages, just complimenting personal attacks, you know, things, anything they could find from the sound of my voice to how I look, that I'm British. Um, doing things like sending emails, but no, nothing wrong did... with that, Joe. Nothing. Yeah. Wrong with to, it. to be fair, the, the British stuff is probably justified. Come on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, don't. We can't. Even Boris say Johnson. This, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, let's not bring in UK politics into this. Yeah, no. Oh, what a nightmare it's been over here. Yeah, oh, it has. Been. <laughs> it's been it's been horrendous. Um, but no, just just things like that, and it's just. You know, some people, it, what bugs me is when people just say, oh, get thick skin. And I'm like, okay, uh, I'll, I'll just press, I'll press the button and it just happens. Yeah, it's not, um, it's You simple. know, everybody goes through things and we all, you know, any psychologist will tell you that uh, abuse is abuse. Yeah. Um, mm. There's no one sort of abuse that's worse than the other because we all experience and react to it in our own way. And then for me, it was because I've had so much years of what I've told you about and there's things I've missed out, you know, of this sort of abuse and I've, had to deal with it on my own because you got to also understand most companies, bigger companies, they have crisis management teams. Mm. It goes through a chain of command. Yeah. I mean, not with the EA thing, you know, I feel sorry for them, you know, that tweet, but normally it goes through a, a, a chain of command. They can't just press the red button. A lot of it's on me. I can't really go up to people and say, you know, the team say, well, can I post this? Because they don't fully know. It's on yeah. me a lot mm. of it. And I get the brunt of it all. So it just got to a point where um, I was like, you know, I've suffered from mental health a lot before from bullying with school. So that's why it's affected me more because uh, I've always just let people basically kick, kick uh, you know, throw sand in my face and um, and whatnot. Mm. And then feeling lonely with the stuff I mentioned. And now it's just that particular weekend. I was just on my own drinking a little bit. And I was just so, you know, you know, when you just feel so fed up in those days, and you, you get in a hole and you can't really get yeah. out of it. It just happened all mm. that night. My partner, she's a nurse. She was she was working. And uh, and um, yeah, the guys were one of, was one of them was moving out, so there was on holiday, so I had no one. I never really talked to him much about it, and um, this abuse was just getting worse. So I, I uh, at the time I didn't realise that Sony, you know, their team had made a statement about the abuse they received. I had no idea about it, and um, I put this this statement out like because mental health, I always think. Sp- I've always been an advocate for me- mental health, but it's something that I've been afraid to speak about. So I think around people. Like, I, if we met in real life, I'd be open to speak about it. And I'd probably yeah, come out yeah, with yeah. it. And I'd listen, I'd give advice, and I'd want advice. But with the game stuff, I was always like, hmm, I felt a bit embarrassed about it. Like, I thought, is it normal to just get this abuse? Or should we accept it because it's our job? Yeah. So I put out this statement as like, you know, having a bit of whiskey. I thought, you know what, I just want, maybe this will help. I, I didn't even really think. And that ended up, like, going pretty viral. And I just got um, all this support from people. And um, from 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 developers like uh, like uh, AAA is like um, uh, what do you call him now? Uh, I'm saying from big developers, I can't remember that. Splash Damage reached yeah. out. Um, Sarah see, Bond, I think, tweeted. Yes, yeah, Sarah Bond. She direct messaged me as well. She was lovely, really nice person. Um, the, mm. I think some some director of the BAFTA of Game Awards reached out to me. Um, lots of people reached out. <laughs> and I never intended for that to happen. It wasn't about that. It was also as well. I kind of thought if I can fate, if I can conf- sort of smash this stigma a little bit as well, it was in probably subconsciously in my back of my mind it, with game development and this type of abuse people receive because it wasn't just about me as well. Yeah. Um. I thought let's just see what happens. And then yeah, it was overwhelming response. And then um, I released a video then afterwards where I was just like. Again, I was a bit tipsy and I was like just thanking people and I, I uh, just broke down in it because uh, it was just a mixture of feelings from feeling so sad and low to a massive sort of um, like a massive high. And then um, again, that went viral and it was just like not intended to happen. It was just nice to have that support. Uh, and then 
I got my courage back up. I thought, you know what? Because honestly, guys, it got to a point where I had that much anxiety. I was scared to post about the game, but mm. specifically Xbox stuff. Well, I because think... I, I was like, am I bad at my job? Is this like, am I doing the right marketing? Is, is it, is it, you know, is it true? When somebody says something so much about you, you, you get to you a point to where you start it. to believe it. Yeah. yeah. And that's when you, when you know it's not good. And that's the point I was in. And um, I thought, you know what? You know, don't be negative. You know, we can't control these people. It's, it's how you react to things in life. And I've always known that, you know, it's hard to, to be consistent with it. So I thought, right, I did a tweet on sorry i did a post on twitter with this game that gameplay clip that went mega viral and i thought that did well it was thought, a really you know good one as well yeah <laughs> I, I thought let's do that on twitter get it bang it on there and i thought positive <clears> vibes <throat> that's why i said positive vibes because it's in relation to the thing in the past and um i uh, posted that um and i don't know what happened but that some you know it ended up going insane insanely viral uh cory from you know the god of war Mm, I that. think he saw the personal message because he put he put a love heart next to the game, so he must have seen the statement oh. as well. I think he ended up I think he was going to... through his own stuff too. So yeah, he was resonated with him. Yeah. Mm. So so that was so nice of him, and he ended up playing it on the Steam Deck doing another tweet. So mm. um, yeah, and then someone, an esports commentator called Jake, he's actually kind of made it happen in a way as well. He retweeted mm. it, and it ended up getting. 400,000 likes, 40 million views in about a day or two. And it just mm. went insane. Massive groups and Instagram with huge things. Honestly, um, it gets even deeper than this. Celebrities were seeing it. Um, uh, things like that. And um, people are sorry. And then it just kept spiraling out of control. And then I was just like, wow. And I was a little bit worried because it was like, with the post, I'd put where five indie developers making the game and I didn't like, I wasn't, it was never intended in a way for it to happen to go viral and I never worded it in a way to be disingenuous, but like it's never been, I've never tried to do our marketing. I never have done our marketing in a way where I'm, I'm trying to make the Xbox be like, like I'm, I'm never trying to make Hypercharge seem like it's just come out. What, I'm, what I have been trying to do for a marketing campaign is build hype for, for it because it is yeah, a new yeah. game. That's, Sorry, that's it, is, <laughs> it, is, it is a game that we are actively developing. It's had eight major updates. We launched one last night. Um, it coming on a new platform. Therefore, in my mind, it's new to those players. So I'm not going to word something like our game is being out for two years and it's coming out. And I'm, I'm not going to say it like that. It's Twitter. Yeah. It's going to be punchy with it. And we are making the game. You know, where, where do you draw the line? So I got a little bit of uh, slack for that, which which upset me a little bit because I was like, you know, they've not read the, the full context of everything ah. I got there. What? So, so the crap was because they thought you were making it out to be this brand new Xbox so game? Some or? people were like that, yeah. And that was a bit upsetting because it was like if they had done their research with the mental health side of things, they would have known how it happened. You know, because the basically Xbox fans, the true Hypercharge fans, made it happen through the support. Mm. It was it was the internet coming to our or my aid, and that was the beautiful thing about it. You know, I would argue it wasn't so much the clip; it was more the build up of the positivity, and people came together, and it was amazing. Yeah, um, I, I, I guess it goes to show a little bit as well. You know, at that moment when you you know, you kind of had had enough and you, you just wanted to say something. You weren't, you, at that point, you weren't marketing the game. You were just like, look, we're just five people trying to make a game. Yeah, doing basically. The best we yeah. Can. And this kind of abuse and this kind of messaging, like, why? Like, it doesn't serve any purpose. It doesn't make me think, well, oh, I'm just going to work a little bit harder. You know, like, it's just, it's just hurtful. And then you, then at that point, I guess it's, it's kind of life affirming, <clears throat> right? To see that switch get flipped and you see, oh, no. There are actually decent, kind, empathetic human beings out there that are actually like yeah, definitely totally fit. You know, because there's one thing, and I think Nick's probably probably the better source for the negativity than than perhaps I am. You know, I get to, I get, I almost kind of skirt around in the background and and don't really get any kind of abuse yet. That, that <laughs> isn't an invitation, internet. All right, don't DM me. Um, but you know, for for whatever reason, but there is this horrible element to gaming as a general whole, not just Xbox, not just PlayStation gaming. There's this keyboard warrior anonymity that just, you know, mm. you would never, the some stuff that I've read and, and seen people receiving messages, 
I, I try and picture someone going up to someone in the street that they've never oh. met, that they never will meet, and saying that, and it just would never happen because yeah, that person would probably be get punched in the face. Yeah. But, oh, look, I'm protected because you don't know who I am, so I can just say these things. I don't have to mm. think about the impact of them. I don't have to think about who I'm hurting or who I'm upsetting. Yeah. And it's it's kind of depressing that there are people out there that have that little respect just for just to be a decent person. Um, yeah, yeah. So I totally yeah. feel why you kind of that that kind of got you down. And Nick, I know you've certainly had your brunt. I don't think you've had a great week. Let's be honest, right? <laughs> While we've been off air, it's been nice to have a break. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big horrible liar, apparently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so, what I've been copying all week. I was like, in Queensland, and I'm like, oh god, <laughs> this really? is what I want to deal with while I'm in Queensland. Yeah. Oh my god. But look, anyway. on the subject of positivity, there is a super chat, Nick. I'm not sure yeah, we do. We've got a super chat from VR. Uh, $5 super chat. I played the Hypercharge demo today and I just bought it. Congrats on the game. Uh, I love it. I hope I get it on Xbox Game Pass. Well, we, I mean, look. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, thank I'm you so sure much. people are going to be <clears throat> asking about Game Pass and stuff like that, but we can leave that alone. But, yeah, well, yeah. no, with, with Game Pass, um, I, think, I think I've finished the origin sort of story there, but but no, but with the mental health side, thank you for sort of talking with me with it as well. I think it's very important. No, that's fine. Um, and I hope Not enough more, people do talk about it. Yeah, I hope more people talk about it in general, and I hope especially developers talk about it because um, we shouldn't have to. Nobody should have to put reviews, but I think more so online. Whatever's happening in the world, it's definitely getting worse. It is. People think it's the norm uh, to. It wasn't just about the release date, you see. It's also like people being so toxic and vulgar with, you know, mm. I want this, this fucking, why is this fucking feature not in the game? You know, people yeah. calling me, calling me cunts, you know, pardon my French, <laughs> literally, because I have, we haven't put something in a game. And you're like, you put your Americans heart on the line. into something. Americans yeah. on the line. I know you don't like the C word, but you are dealing with Brits <laughs> and Australians. All right, to oh, us, right. it's like it's it's up there with beans and the we letters. Just, it's just and... part of it's just part <laughs> of the way. <laughs> <we're> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, we wouldn't bat an eye, but there's there's some Americans out there are like, did he just say the worst thing in the human oh, really? race? Oh, <laughs> it's all right, no worries. I, mean, we, I literally I use it every other word. That I... word doesn't have the same venom no, it doesn't in Australia or the UK that it does in the US. It's so. like saying hello, goodbye to us. That's right. Yeah. I call my mates that. Hey. Yeah, like there's See a reason. Who's they, mate? <laughs> there's a reason Billy Butcher in the boys yeah. does it with so yeah. like, oh, it's so well, endearing. I, I feel oh, like God, it's a warm hug. The boys season finale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe oh, we get to so that. Good. But yeah, oh. um, I mean, it's it's awesome, and like, I, I appreciate we're we're coming up on time in terms of of your availability. And, and unless you want to stick around, obviously, you know, it, it's yeah, it's no, it's alright. Um, We've got some community questions for Joe. Oh yeah, so should we I'll, just, I'll quickly like... mention the Game Pass thing just first. Yeah, so, please. Yeah. With Game Pass, Xbox have reached out to us multiple times, and I will even say the tactic with just off topic that with with um, well, the strategy with hoping people see the tweets. PlayStation also saw it. That we've had multiple meetings with them. They're very interested. We're coming to PlayStation as well, and I think it's the right technical word. We have cross-platform support working to an extent, and we want it to be cross cross-platform agnostic, meaning all consoles can play together. Awesome. And we've got a very good sit. So the system, when we're working towards it, the system we have in now, it's so good. I believe you don't have to. If you're on any console, you don't have to sign up to any accounts or anything and all, all that nonsense. You know, it's literally you have an invite code. So hopefully, imagine you're on a PlayStation, I'm on Xbox. You just read out your invite code. The PS PlayStation person puts it in, joins your lobby. That's how yeah. simple we're hoping it can be. Um, but for Game Pass, um, what was said is that it's because uh, we've talked about it, you know, to try and understand it more. If it would be beneficial for us as a team, we don't fully know yet. We need to talk to them more about it. But, you know, they said, you know, it could be a possibility, but we'll see how the game does. And that was a few months ago. And I think, you know, I think they're going to be wanting to really push Hypercharge now, but we'll see how the game goes and it'll be an opportunity. But yeah, we just have to, we're going to have a sit down with them and see, does it make sense for Xbox, excuse me? And does it make sense for us? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's where we stand with Game Pass. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So so in terms of Xbox, do do we do we have a, a rough idea of, do you, do, you so, want to, do you want to tell all those people, all those toxic trolls, and be like, all right, jerks, who's your date? <laughs> right. So, yeah, we do. We are hoping to launch 
Q1 2023. Now it could be March, April, and I'll be honest, it may even be a lot earlier. So it, wow. yeah, it could be a lot earlier, but to be safe, mid 2023 to get everything that we want, but it could be earlier. Um, and that's that's the release date. Yeah. So when we get the plan is when we get closer to it. Once we get more comfortable in development and we know for certain and we can go to Xbox, right? Yeah, we can push this live then. We can mm. talk to Xbox and we'll we'll announce an official release date. Awesome. I think I think that's a pretty good that's a pretty good window, right? And that's not too mm. far away. I mean No, it's I'm, not really. Six months I'm, or whatever. My the days go by in such a blur nowadays anyway. Like it'll be mm. I'll wake up and it'll be like, Oh, Hypercharge is out on Xbox today, and then I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. be able to play it some more. So um no, that's great. Um I know we've got as Nick just said uh some community questions so i I suppose i'll use this as to briefly mention what what those are um if you've been watching for for a long time or if this is your first time watching the xbox zero podcast we're supported by our patrons and those patrons get a special perk uh with access to our patreon lounge which is where they can ask nick and i and whoever we've got on for the week um some questions and a lot of them are hypercharge focused this week so uh, i'll pass over to nick and he can yeah read through I'll, it. I'll i'll go through the ones that are yeah for um joe uh okay top first question uh welcome back panel yes because we had last week off question for joe as an indie dev what was your most popular form of marketing when you were first trying to get your game known I remember seeing you post about your game on Imja a lot. Uh, how successful was that for you in your game? We sort of covered that before, didn't we? So Imja was incredibly successful um, because back then it was like a mini version of the front page of the internet. Um, it was great at getting wish lists. Not so much sales, but it was good at getting wish lists. Um, so I would say Imja was one of the sort of best sort of avenues to go down. And mm. I'd say Reddit was was good when it worked, but it was more of a slower process. Mm. But to answer that question sort of more broadly, uh, is I think the best strategy I found was creating relationships with influencers, journalists, and uh, moderators on Reddit uh, channels and stuff. Just creating bits of friendships where you know the the new story, the new you're on this. You're not here to make a quick book and rip people off. It was just more about being honest with your position and reaching out to people and keeping sustaining relationships. Because I've I've got relationships with like you know Ian Higton. He's um, from Eurogamer. He was the first person to ever do an article in Hypercharge in 2016. We still keep in touch. I always keep him in the loop. He always gets back to me. Literally in a mm. couple of minutes. Like and it's because we are just you know I've I've never met him, but we've just got that nice. We've always just we've always been rapport. Yeah, it would, yeah, basically. And that's what I'd, I'd say has worked for us and I'd recommend to all the indie developers to do. Yeah. That's Good cool. answer. Good answer. It's all mm. about that networking, yo. Yeah, network. It's not what you network, know, it's yeah. who you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Jesse, brother. Welcome back, boys. Nick, you are irreplaceable. But I did have Nottian's Nick impersonation, which is a pretty high-quality substitute but more like a replay of Nick's greatest hits of horrible gaming takes. John, I hope everything is going okay for you, mate. Jess, glad your computer setup survived the damn scare of the upstairs bathroom leak. Oh, man. When when (laughs) Jesse was telling that story, I was like, oh, oh, no. Yeah, for for context, Uh, internet, Jesse's... uh... Jesse had a water leak, and it all poured down over his desk and set up, which was a scary... Mm-hmm. Everything was soaking wet, and it took twelve hours and four big ass fans, but it all works because oh. I'm very lucky. So far, yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome, Joe. I gotta know just how tempted have you and the others been about turning your arena shooter into a battle royale? I saw some YouTuber playing it, and he said the wall closing in could be like a patrolling pet dog that can chase down and rip up any player that gets caught out of the zone too long. <laughs> That's cool. So There's that feature creep coming back in. Yeah, <laughs> big, big boy room and everyone's trying yeah, to take each yeah. other out. So it's a very interesting question. Thank you for asking. It's something that we have discussed and there's a few things to it. That I think to an extent, a lot of gamers, even though it's so popular, I think we are fatigued with Battle Royals because there's so many that come out and fail and promise and don't deliver. Yeah. 
And I, yeah, I think there's fatigue with it. Mm. And we're a small team. For for a battle rail to succeed from a technical level, it's the server back end. You've got to have the mm. infrastructure. And if you don't have it yourself, these servers and you know the the build engineers and whatnot, you've got to pay. And it's if your game is going to be popular, it's literally hundreds, thousands and thousands of hundreds, I think hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, if you're really going to be popular and low, up. and it's like, do you then go in and launch your battle rail with? out the so we could launch a battle rail we don't have the funds of the servers we'll do the best we can and if it explodes in popularity the servers are going to crumble and the game will flop first impressions mm, count it'll mm. be very hard to create traction again and we don't know we're going to make the money backs for these servers so it's like that's what's difficult um when we consider making a battle rail however however if somebody was going to make a battle royale action figure scale we are the people to do it i do believe nobody would get it done like us and it's something if we had enough funding me personally i would love to do a battle royale as action figures Uh, so it's not something we would completely (laughs) throw out of the window um i'm very very surprised nobody has actually done it yet because I think mm. it, if done right, it could be amazing. There's so yeah. much game, game, like gameplay potential, like cool design decisions you can yeah. do in that yeah. sandbox. If I think about it, and, and this is gonna, you know what? I'll save this tangent for after that because I don't. The timestamps are already going to be hard enough for me as it is. I'm not going to make it worse. Uh, after we're done with the questions, there's something I want to ask you about, like a like almost the a potential marketing opportunity for you guys or something with the game. But I'll, I'll, after the questions oh, yeah. are done, I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to bring it up. Okay. But yes, but I think a Battle Royale would be yeah, real Same. cool. A lot of potential there. Yeah. No, I agree. Okay. Yep, definitely. Creaky legs. Hello, lads and Joe. Glad to see Hypercharge getting so much love. There are not many video games in this space anymore that cover playing as toys in the world. Army Men, Sarge's Heroes was probably a huge series for me back in the day. So looking at Hypercharge feels like the evolution of toy shooters, which I've wanted a resurgence of for years now. So my question is, would you be interested in potentially making toy versions of Xbox characters to play as in the game if you got the green light for it? And who would your top picks be? The rest of the boys can answer as well. <laughs> So, mm. if we get enough traction and we can the release Chief toy, yeah, I'm to going be. to, <laughs> I'm going to, to Xbox and I'm saying, can we do some sort of thing to give as an action figure to early sort of purchases or early yeah. people? You know, you see what I'm saying? Something where if you get in on it, that's what I'd love to do. So yes, like I mean, a Marcus I Phoenix toy and Master Serious Cars Sam, you could do so much. Ah. Like, I, mm. yeah, you could do so so. The thing with it having different characters in, obviously we have our own parody sort of those version of it, yeah. you know, like knockoffs in a way. Um, it would get to the point where we'd lose an identity a bit, but I think the way I thought we could do this, and I need to talk to the team, is we could have like we have all the characters part of the story, and we could have like agents who are like separate mm-hmm. in a way, you know. So it it it, it differentiates it from what you can have in game because one thing, the thing is, one thing we don't want to do. And we won't do it is have any pay to progress or microtransactions we uh as a team you know, if, if somebody wants to do that and somebody wants to spend money on that fine that's your um that's your view you go do that but for us we grew up uh, unlocking things in game so yeah. if we were going to do it it would be something like optional dlc which isn't a microtransaction yeah. it's very separate or we would do it so i personally would just love it love to make it so you unlock it in the game you yeah. don't buy it, you unlock it. You unlock a Master Chief in the game by doing something really cool, something difficult, like it used to be. Yeah, like an actual achievement. Yeah, because like, then... Hey, I got you, Master Chief yeah. I did all this honestly cool like... To, to be fair, and you know what? This was what I was going to bring up, and now I saw the community questions, so I might as well talk about it now. There are idiots like me, as anyone who watches this podcast knows, there are idiots like me that want to throw money at Epic to buy... Uh, John Wick in Fortnite to buy whoever it is. Like, I, I still, I still think you guys are in a unique position 
maybe somewhere down the line when you guys maybe maybe grow the team a little bit or you're yeah. more you have that financial foundation to do it up. But I, I have this, even though I'm not even part of your team, but straight away it started going through my head. I imagine this amazing marketing partnership with like Hasbro and all of a sudden, let's say one day the Battle Royale comes along and all of a sudden Hasbro says, yep, we want in on, we want to be part of this. So all of a sudden you've got Transformers toys that are you could buy for the Battle Royale and you could get all, because obviously Hasbro has a hell of a lot of uh toy licensing stuff and all of a sudden you have all these opportunities where someone could literally just buy a toy that they then use in the game as part of if the battle royale were to come along or even in the the wave based part of it i just like, i think you, yeah i can picture you almost describing effectively a toy battle royale but not a fictional toy i.e not branded toys but literally a branded toy like yeah. oh, i was always like my transformers were my favorite toys well i was i loved the teenage mutant ninja turtles well yeah. hypercharged battle royale or hypercharged 2 or you know wherever this world goes that's the game where you're getting all the branded toys yeah fighting off against each other and you could yeah. even do crazy stuff where you, if you had playstation characters and xbox characters mm. Let's see Master Chief versus Kratos in Hypercharge. Yeah, Boom. no, that's true. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. That's but like modeled like point. toys. So you know, yeah, you know modeled like toys. So get all the joints. <laughs> yeah, like you know how Disney Infinity had that look. And I remember seeing a documentary on Disney yeah. Infinity. <clears throat> yeah. Not a documentary. It was some sort of dev interview. And they were the, the designers of Disney Infinity were talking about how, yes, this is what Elsa looks like in Frozen. But we had to make a version of Elsa that fit the look of the Disney Infinity toys. This could be a similar thing. So, so for example, Master Chief is in Fortnite, Kratos is in Fortnite, Aloy is in Fortnite, but they effectively look almost like the in-game models, just a little more mm. simplified and cartoonified to, to fit in with Fortnite's aesthetic. I envision mm. this future where you guys do a similar thing. You have these cross promotional opportunities where yeah xbox loves your game and they're like you know what we'd love to help you guys out with getting a master chief toy model in that game so it's a master chief but he's modeled like an actual toy with the yeah arms that yeah. swivel and all that sort of stuff like looks like molded I, I, plastic all of that jazz yeah yeah, like yeah, yeah i see i be reckon cool. that would be, be cool. pretty cool like i understand the sentiment and it's it's quite admirable as well that you don't want the microtransactions and stuff but don't don't underestimate idiots like me that would want to throw money the thing is you. i throw money at microtransactions still i'll put my hands up yeah so do i've I. tried to buy, buy the fortnite skin you don't know how long it took me to, I, i've been playing with my nephew a few months ago and i've really tried to get it so <sighs> maybe, maybe our tone, tone will change maybe maybe you know maybe we will do I'm speaking for the team here, but this is just hypothetical. Maybe if things went really well, it's a, it's, a, it's a good point. It's a valid point you bring up. Maybe like if we were to do it, let's just say you can unlock master, you can buy Master Chief. I'd still want a sensible way. I, I'd I'd want I want because a lot of the times in micro with microtransactions, you can unlock certain characters, but it's behind such kind of like. A paywall where it's so difficult to buy that's yeah, what yeah. i don't like because yeah. i'd rather if you want to buy it and you don't mind you don't have like a money problem or whatever uh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense but, but yeah um, go and buy it that's great but for people who want to unlock maybe a slightly different version of it you know the, the skin the materials a bit different you can do this pretty simple thing it'll be a little bit yeah, of a grind yeah. but it's not going to be frustrating it's not going to be annoying so it separates the people who just don't have time because i understand people don't have time to do it and they may love your game they may, may be a fanatic but they don't have the yeah, time yeah. to busy so we do have to think about things like that but i, th I, I yeah, hope there's a way we can separate it a little bit so it's fair yeah. for people who can't maybe afford it or who don't like it um or who just not in you know so just keeping it open yeah yeah oh, well, well rocket approach. league did a similar thing so if you got if you bought rocket league on xbox at the time there was a a warthog that you can use in huh. Rocket League and a Gears vehicle. I can't even remember what the vehicle was. Armadillo. But I think, 
Yes, the Armadillo. But with both those vehicles, you had to meet a requirement, which I think was like one of them was like just play a match and you got one of them. The other one was maybe score a goal. It was very, very basic for you to then unlock those two vehicles. So I understand the sentiment of wanting to do it that way. Um, But I still reckon there would also be people that would want to just be like, yep, I'll buy the Master Chief toy. I'll buy the Banjo-Kazooie toy. I'll buy the Crackdown Agent toy. I'll buy the, I I, I don't know. Because, yes, there's microtransactions and there's DLC. Like, I'm not suggesting you guys go and have hyper bucks. And I always think I like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let me let me write that down. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, taking down some you. notes. Hold on a second. Hyper box. <laughs> Hyper change. <laughs> oh god. Oh yes, god. Indeed. But like, the, I, I, I've I've always been like from all the way back to horse armor. Like, I've never really been against that sort of stuff. Like, if someone wants to, like. As long as it's not a thing that's prohibitive or yeah. a, a blocker, I've got no issue with DLC and microtransactions. If it's an additive thing that someone wants, like, you know, in Forza Horizon 3 and 4 or 3, I just paid the two or three bucks and I got the map that showed me where all the boards are. I see. And, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And no one. People don't have to do that. No, That's just what but, I wanted but for to you, do. it might be beneficial for like of the things yeah. I said for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah um, it's a time and, versus and cash. Yeah. Yeah. Problem. That's why I've got no problem with that stuff. I paid the three or four bucks and unlocked the stuff in Resident Evil 2 Remake as well because that's what I felt like doing. I didn't want to grind away at whatever. I just paid the two or three dollars and I got it. Um, mm. So I just reckon, again, I'm sure this is way, way down the line of your thinking right now, but I'm just saying don't discount people like me that want to yeah. throw money at you like yeah no it's a it's a good i'm glad you brought it up actually because it is a, it's a very interesting it's a good point um mm. something i'll actually bring up again with the team if we get to that <laughs> point uh because no it's true because yeah. things can change it's just i think our biggest thing is it's just because we're so used to it that we've accepted it uh yeah. because when it first got intro- introduced you, there was a quite a little bit of sort of arms mm. thrown in the air at first um because it was like wait wait what's this you know and then it became more and more uh sort of normal but um i think at the end of the day it's a, i still spend money on microtransactions even though i don't really like to i still do it <laughs> in, in to a degree i like to but, but if i'm honest the reason why i purchase things in in with microtransactions is because i don't actually know how to unlock them half the time <laughs> yeah. I, yeah no legitimately like in csgo for example I, that they i don't the skins there i actually like their system because it's very straightforward and simple how to unlock it and i loved building up and doing this doing things to unlock things on that because it was very intuitive and this is what maybe i've just had a bad experience with it maybe with it get being sort of a game developer and around game, game developer as well maybe i've had it's put me off it um but yeah but at the end of the day you know time is money is in your time right. and you know, if you've got a busy work 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 style, and you, because if somebody wants to spend money on microtransaction, I'm all for. That. I won't say they're wrong for doing mm. that. You know, it's more of a personal th- belief, I think. But maybe my beliefs are a bit conflicted as well. I don't know. I uh, think maybe it's because we've not been in that position yet. Yeah, and and mm. certainly in the hardcore gaming bubble, if you say we've got no MTX in our game, it's almost like a declaration of pride nowadays. Like. No mm. MTX, no hidden charges. Da, 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 yeah, da. true. It's, it is an old school game. You buy it, yeah, you've got the whole that's... thing. I get it. I, I think it's naive but because, as we've learned, is. there's there's like seven years into this journey, right? Games are expensive. Someone's got to pay to the bills and keep the lights on like, and all the, of that stuff. The, the cost of game development over the last thirty years has exploded out of control, but yet the price of games hasn't gone up. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, and I think people forget that if anything, the price of games has gone down. down if yeah. anything, it's actually gotten cheaper to just buy a game up front, as opposed to, you know, and I, and I, I'm okay with microtransactions and DLC supple- supplementing that that income, uh, that initial upfront revenue. 
again, for me, as long as the microtransactions or DLC or whatever aren't prohibitive, they're not blockers, they're not pay to win, as long as they're not in that space, then I've got no issue with it. Like I, I still, I still think Fortnite is the model. Like, hey, yeah. you want Master Chief in Fortnite? Here you go. I mean, don't get me wrong; those skins are ridiculously expensive, but that's again, if you if you want to be dumb want and throw to, that much yeah. money at digital skins like I do, that's that's on you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, if you want Halo and Fortnite, here you go, twenty bucks, and he's yours. If you want, but in the end, you can spend thousands of hours in Fortnite without spending a cent. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. and that's okay too. Um. But that's the thing, you know, my, my son and my daughter play Fortnite and they'll see a cool skin. Oh, baba, can I get V-Bucks to get this skin? Mm. And I'll either say yes or no. Like, it's not... Uh, yeah, you know, it's, know. No one's got a gun to your head, really. That's so, right. Like, like, no one's... No, and, I, and, I, and I envision I, I envision a world with that same success for your game where my son's playing Hypercharge and then he sees and the Ninja Turtles, like those old Ninja Turtles models appear in the store, like those original, original Ninja Turtles. It would help reinforce, it reinforce the nostalgia for sure. Yes, that very, those very, very first Ninja Turtles yeah. models and they're in Hypercharge and my son sees them, he's like, oh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> in, a, get these me. <laughs> <laughs> in a way, you know, it makes sense because to, even to the story, because like it could be like a Sergeant Max Ammo, this wise action figure, he's the OG one, and he's got all these connections, Ninja Turtles, Spider-Man, you, you can make it out like, he's, you see, you see what I mean, like, maybe he could become a thing, <laughs> if yeah. maybe Sergeant Max Ammo. Speaking That's of that, good. I've got something to tell you as well, which is really cool, um, I can't say who it was, but a very known film sort of uh, company who produced things, um, emailed us and said um the the um i believe celebrities have seen the clip thought it was awesome and the word and they mentioned names like bradley cooper and things have said oh, we have well. a meeting with them about doing a tv show for hypercharge <laughs> what i think you yep. mentioned that on twitter didn't you mention this on twitter i might have done i can't remember i've tweeted that much things <laughs> that's awesome uh, but, Ooh. But how cool is, is cool. that? Like, wow. And I think with what I've told you about the story, I think if that was a TV series, it'd be amazing. If we got it the animations right and the right, like, it looks so good. Like, oh, going man. on these adventures, trying to protect the hypercar and stop major evil. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be There's really, really cool. Super chat just coming from Kayasante. Kayasante, yep. Uh, nothing like a dev being candid and open. Uh, love the combo, gents. Never change. Just bought it for my Steam Deck. Looking forward to the Xbox version. Thanks, Kayasante. Thanks, heaps. Oh, yeah, no, thank That's you great. so much for buying it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. It's very it's kind of you. It's a good little community on the Xbox platform. You know, don't let the, the ones that were hassling you for release dates. The, vo the know, vocal minority? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. The very vocal minority. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, uh, last question for Joe. Well, we've, we've got a bunch of other questions, but this is the last one that's for Joe. Uh, hello, it's from good old Collingwood. Who, like me, would be very happy at the moment. <laughs> hello, John, Nick, Jesse, and welcome, Joe. John, I hope you watched last week's You Had Me at Halo podcast. Which of the four panelists take on Nick's What's Going On Did You Like Best? <laughs> they all do that. I didn't watch it. Did they all make fun of me? Uh, I, I I think that they they all had an attempt at uh, you know the the quintessential what's, what's going, going on. on. Um, you know maybe maybe Jesse who cue yeah up at some we point all tried. Right um, you know mine and Nadian's. I don't think Ursul really did one, and my wife didn't want to do one. So it's mainly just me and Nadian. Uh, yeah, okay. I think Nadian. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll have to watch it. Yeah, I have to watch it. Nick. Are you going to download Match Point Tennis from Game Pass and release your inner Kyrgios? <laughs> Probably not. I asked my brother about Match Point Tennis because he's been hanging for a new tennis game and he said it's... I think meh. I think one of those guys is reviewing Match Point at the moment. I'll just wait for Top Spin 5. I'll wait for <laughs> And that. hope it's good. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Uh, okay, serious question for Joe. Earlier last month, it was announced that Xbox would release demos of indie games as part of Game Pass Ultimate. 
and would assist developers by financing the demo. As a developer, what are your thoughts about making demos? Are they worth the time and money invested in them or a distraction from getting on with the game? Which is an interesting question because you guys have a demo. Yeah, we do. Um, it is a good question. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's quite difficult to answer. Um, <clears throat> one thing we found with Steam is, so when you get a lot of traction, and we'll, we'll, I'll know when the data comes in <clears throat> in a couple of days. Excuse me. <clears throat> Something in my throat. <laughs> um is that you it can do so a demo is meant to let a consumer try your products before purchase purchasing mm -hmm. purchasing it obviously um and with something like steam customers go in because a lot of people won't know there's a demo and then it, then it, you know, it's not worth. But then people go in and um, they can find out whether or not they like it. So we've found with Hypercharge that it has deterred quite a lot of negative reviews because people have, we can see by the refund rate. So we think if we wouldn't have had a demo to allow consumers to try, they would have gone in and used their precious time, not like the game, and if you're more inclined to leave a negative review, um, you know, that type of consumer, they probably would have, yeah. as opposed to going in the demo, you know, not really their thing, and then they just refund it. Because on Steam, you can you get refunds and some people write in feedback. So I think I think a demo is a good thing because I, th I think overall it's a good thing because it shows transparency that you believe in your product mm -hmm. because you're putting it out there sort of naked in a way, like here, try it. Um, he, you know, here's, here's almost like here's a, it's like being a baker. Here's a sli slice of my cake. I'm confident you're gonna like it. You know, you're putting mm -hmm. it out there for everybody, and um, that's what that's what we found. So I would say demo is if you are confident in your product, a demo yeah. is a good thing, and it will deter. Sure. It will never stop, but it will likely deter negative reviews, save the consumer time, yeah. in different aspects, and it will save you a bit of a headache. So. Um, there always is a debate of um, is it um, where can a demo affect sales? You know, so if we didn't, so we, let's just say we get ten thousand demo downloads, and there's so many refunds, would would we have made more money if we had not had the demo? Would have people just kept the game and tried it later? You'd you can have never to do know, can of, you? You know, you'd have to do like a lot of A B sort of. I think you call it testing. You know, where you have like cross reference stuff or whatever mm, um yeah. you know exact side by side examples of without with demo without demo with, with different times and whatnot um so i i can't really answer that it's very difficult um but i personally i think it's i think demos are a good thing yeah yeah that's fine i, reckon I like demos yeah. There's a, well, um, a in, difference in too end. with this Xbox version um cuz theirs is taking in progress builds and not making something bespoke and like paying you to just touch it up a little bit, so it does end up being very different than the Steam one. So, mm. that, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to do that with Hypercharge. Like, put on a little bit of a polished build. That's something because that that's the whole reason why we're spending more time, you know, on it to release it. So, I, I'm not too familiar with that with the Xbox side of things. Yeah, it's, yeah I, I think, think it's, it's Project their way of... Moorcroft is the the name of it all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the nutshell is it's Sarah Bond's gig, I think. Um, but the nutshell was from a development point of view, particularly around trade shows where they they rush out these polished little semi vertical slices of a of a level or, or or you know, or you know, say the that opening level to hypercharged rather than doing that and then it goes to a trade show floor and it's played by whoever walks through the door and then it's never touched again. It allows developers to actually just add a tiny bit more polish on to make it you know, consumer viable, they'll pay you to do it mm. and you get to release the demo on the platform alongside yeah. the actual game. So of game Plus Ultimate. I think they're trying to take mm. some of the pain out of of that early development and to get, you know, to provide indie developers with a, a slightly larger voice because as you've, mm. as you, you know, we're talking about with Steam, it's like, you know, trying to throw a drop of water into an ocean and make an impact you know like there's so many games how do yeah. i get anyone to notice me and and this was mm -hmm. one way that they've kind of leaned in towards 
trying to to help out i think the indie dev scene so be interested to see what happens with it and see if developers latch onto the idea but i think the argument is if they're already making these kind of semi vertical slices for trade shows and things like that why not go that tiny yeah. bit extra earn some cash and yeah. create that buzz online yeah no, that makes sense in that yeah in that yeah yep but that was the the last hypercharged focused community question and yes. i appreciate you know, we've uh, gone a little i'm bit just over. having a quick scan through and i don't think i can see others that are hypercharged specific so, yeah. so uh, i appreciate we've gone Joe, a little bit it's, over. it's up to you mate if you need to head off and get some sleep you can if you want to hang around for the other questions also feel free it's totally, totally yeah up. is it more questions for me sorry no, no, that's, that's no, the point. No. It's, the, it's the just other general questions. That's what I say. If you want to hang around for just other general questions and chip in, go for it. If you'd rather go get some sleep, you can do that too. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably get off because I've got so many messages now with what's happened. And I'm gonna have to... <laughs> go, go get excited <laughs> and celebrate with the team, Joe. Yes, um, yes. It was a, a really wonderful moment to kind of witness that happen live. Um, incredibly yeah. wholesome. I wouldn't be surprised to see that itself go viral and someone cut it out and just watch you being like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I might, I'll have to once your video goes live. I'll let you'll have to maybe send me the footage or something. I'll uh, I'll uh, do a little thing and tag tag you in it in the moment we had. Yeah, cool. no worries, man. No worries. We'll do. I'm sure one of us will uh, will ping across a link. But uh, big thanks to everybody watching. Um, and obviously, Joe, thank you for thanks for, for sharing on, the mate. story and your journey with us. Mm. Best of luck to you guys and the rest of the team. Um, looking forward yes. to playing Hypercharged somewhere around <laughs> mid 2023 yeah yeah Excellent. no awesome and thank you guys for having me on you know thank you for getting yeah. in touch when you did thanks uh, for really appreciate on. it hope we can stay in touch and do some other things yeah. together in the future uh for sure and yeah if i, ne if I never answer straight away just, just send me a few uh spam <laughs> messages <laughs> which one which one do you prefer because i've sent you messages on both which one do you prefer twitter or discord you know what i'd probably say twitter more now because i get so much on discord i get i can filter i'm learning to filter bits out now and uh with discord uh, with twitter so i can make certain things more of a priority so so like i can get be better notification from certain people so it's so like with, from, from with your account i can make it more have priority but with discord oh, okay. so in people... discord like discord people can't it's not like anyone can just send you a message on discord it's just friends uh, I don't know why I've got it set to. I think I've got it. Anyone can because of my role. Because if yes. somebody's coming towards uh, me and yeah. had a crash, I need them to get in touch with me because I don't want them, I don't want them to leave a negative review. I want to be able to help yeah, them straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. yeah it makes sense. Fair makes enough. sense. All right. Well, Joe, thank you for hanging out. Go get some sleep. Uh, yeah, or, or rather, go spend the next hour on a buzz and on a high <laughs> with your team. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing more from the game and and hopefully speak to you again soon. Thanks, heaps, mate. Yeah. Take care, everybody, and thank you for everyone watching. See you later. Speak to you no soon, worries. Man. Cheers, Joe. That awesome. Was that was wholesome, wasn't it? Wasn't that wholesome? Like us, just like so endearing to watch him just completely freak out uh, and be excited at funny. what happens there. Like, ah. So th what did that? So as we were on, he made it into that global seller. He list. got a Steam message, or he got a message saying that the game is featured or something. <laughs> Uh, not only featured, but it had made it because they're on sale at the moment as well on Steam. It had made it to like number three on the top sellers chart, which is, you know, yeah. I mean, listening to that journey that those guys have gone through, just trying to bring their little dream to life, I can understand why that would be a real like, oh, that's awesome. It's ours. We made that. You know, it's very, very cool. Um, yeah. Props, props to those guys. Oh, oh man, isn't it nice to have some positivity and some passion? It is. in the room it's nice it's a, it's a good episode mm. to come back on after our little you know unintended right. hiatus um and there, there has been some news and stuff going on yeah but and i'm gonna stuff yeah well, well okay what have you been playing nick what have you been playing uh i've been playing and i need to finish the review off today the written part is done and now i've just got to put the video together today i've oh, been playing the one. klonoa fantasy reverie series the Klonoa ah. collection oh man it's i'm so happy to have Klonoa back like i it was when i when i sold my playstation 2 Klonoa 2 was the only game i wasn't able to get on a newer console and keep a copy of like 
everything else, you know, Manhunt, I got on OG Xbox. Now it's backwards compatible, so I can play that on OG Xbox. You know, Def Jam Vendetta, I got on GameCube, so I can play it on the Wii. Da da da. Klonoa 2 and Klonoa, even Klonoa 1, like you can't, yeah, it's just those games are much harder to play now. So yeah. I'm just, uh, and they've done a really good job. Like the, the remasters are quite good. I, I need to do some research, but I have a sneaking suspicion um, that the first Klonoa is based on the Wii remake, which came out in 2008, which also goes goes for a fortune on eBay. Um, because the difference in quality between the original Klonoa and this new one versus Klonoa 2 and this new one is huge. The first game, the improvement in the first game is just massive. Oh. Um, but Klonoa, yeah, Klonoa has been good. Yes, yes, Trev, probably a high score from me on Klonoa. Uh, <laughs> the, the problem is it depends on how, like, you're talking about a game. The second game is 21 years old and the first game is 25 years old. So in a review like this, it's like, are you reviewing it in terms of how it holds up in 2022? Are you reviewing it in terms of the effort put into the remaster? Are you reviewing it in terms of the, the quality of this package? Like it, I've, I've never reviewed something like this before, so I'm still unsure. I would say yes way... as your boss on this. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're reviewing everything. Does the game hold up? What's the package like? Because I'm actually having the same thing doing um, Capcom Arcade Second Stadium right now, where it's like, yeah, these games, they're even older than Klonoa. And so it ends up coming yeah. down to what is everything? Yeah, I know. But like a, a lot of old games, right? They just don't hold up. For one reason or another, they don't hold up. But fans of those games... Yeah, might I, see it a different it. way and be more inclined to be like, well, no, 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 I know I'm going to love the games because I still play the originals to this day because I kept my PlayStation 2. How much of an effort did they go into remastering them? If the effort's not there, I'll just keep my OG copy and my PlayStation 2 and not touch this new idea. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, so for me, spoiler for my review, the gameplay holds up for me uh that they still feel as great as they look like, as nabco have said or monkey craft the developer said they didn't touch the gameplay it's all in the visuals but to me klonoa as a as a mascot platformer a 2.5d mascot platformer holds up in terms of gameplay very yeah, simple but that. very chill and it's it still holds up so for me i'm looking at it more from the perspective of well, what's this package like I, i'm still in my review, I talk about the fact that it holds up. So, you know, it's just, it was interesting. I haven't reviewed anything like that before. I mean, Ninja Turtles was sort of in that realm because it's paying homage to yeah. the old arcade game. So it's kind of a similar thing. But yeah, in the end, I'm a massive Klonoa fan, so I love it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think if the gameplay holds up, it gives it a higher ceiling. Like if the yeah. gameplay is okay it's not the best then it, you know um, it might not be an if it's a great package it could be an eight but if the gameplay still holds up and that package around it is awesome you know then maybe it's a nine that type of thought process. yeah 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 i'm yeah. enjoying it oh glad to hear it i'm uh i'm playing something that i don't think the embargo allows me to say what i'm playing i'm playing I ignore thing. that all the time and i just say it because everyone knows it uh no one ever cares Okay, I'm playing. I'm playing uh, an Xbox Game Studios game that's due out very soon on Game Pass next this month, um, and that's about all no I'm impressions. Yeah. No impressions whatsoever. Probably um, based on a certain time of the evening. Yeah, you know, the, the sun sets at the end of the day. It gets dark, um, yeah. but yeah. Um, you know, have you ever? You ever seen that George Clooney Quentin Tarantino vampire movie? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Um, yeah, can't recall the name. I don't know why I thought from of that, dusk but... till dawn. From oh. dusk till dawn. Yeah, oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. that's a good movie. Yeah, it's good fun. Um, but yeah, so yeah, look for, looking forward to knuckling down and uh, I started piecing together my uh, my Blade Runner review and and I've been also playing through Ghost Runner. Um, oh, yeah. the complete edition i am old 
I am old and slow. It's very and twitch, isn't it? Goes holy, right. like, man, like, I, I tried it on normal. It has got some accessibility settings, mm. right? And I'm going to I'm gonna caveat this at the beginning of the review. I tried it on normal, and it was just an exercise in sheer frustration. Then mm. I tried it on slower, and I got a little bit further, um, but then encountered, like, another giant brick wall. Yeah. And then I try it on slowest, which feels so like you're just slow, old man. But I, it's just about manageable. But still, I don't. I, I want to blame the aiming somewhat. It feels like I've, I've tried playing around with the the acceleration curve and the sensitivity. I just can't quite seem to get it to feel right. Like I can do all the wall mm. running stuff, but it's the actual when I get down on the ground and I want to snap to that guy. It feels like no matter what I set it to, my sticks just want to fly either side of them. And then I end up like chopping the, it's, oh, when you want to just do this seamless run, all oh, right, but it mm. has got this really wonderful one more go with its checkpoints. Cause it's just like, and you're back and you're like, Oh, I've okay. been meaning to try it. Cause they gave it away on PlayStation plus a couple of months back. And I downloaded it on my PS five and just haven't pushed the button to start it. But it's, it's really it. cool. And, and they, yeah, it's just, but it's difficult. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm persevering. Um, so yep. I'm just working on all sorts of different things. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a weird week for me. Obviously, you know, the, the most of the community knows. Is this the same Sika Mechanica who forced me to finish a rhythm game? Forced you? I'm still waiting for the review, Sukia. Honestly, he's talking about the infamous lost review of uh, Dropkick Heroes, Dive Kick Heroes. The infamous lost review is there somewhere, but yeah. Anyway, uh, how many FPS is the game, John? Uh, if we're talking about Nin Ghost Runner, Ghost Runner is sixty um, with with ray tracing and four K, or one hundred and twenty with no ray tracing and probably checkerboard or or some sort of upscale 4k but it's very very nice looking um for a little indie game i'm curious mm -hmm. as to how really long it is because like it started introducing puzzly elements where you're not just chopping yeah. guys but you've got to do runs to take out shields to then be able to get the guys whilst avoiding being shot by the guys who are being protected by the shield so it's jesus yeah it's um it's cool it's cool Speak, speaking uh, of the in, main indiana jones about... Has uh, arrived in Fortnite. Hours, if you're wondering, can you um, can you put Trav in a uh, 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 timeout for time at out. Least an hour, please, Jesse? <gasps> okay, we'll do. Thank you, thank you. Indiana Jones is in Fortnite. I need to go and do all the events. That's why I'm like, I come back from the holiday and like, bam, Jesse's like, emailed you the code for Klonoa. Like, oh my god, they gave it to us the day it came out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on. And then the indie event started in Fortnite. I'm like, oh, but I want to do that. And then we right. had Thor booked in from like a month ago because we went and saw Thor last night. And then I went to the football yesterday. It's just been – and I'm back at work tomorrow. I've had a week and a half off. And so my last day is going to be like I'm flat out. I'm flat out today. Wow. Uh, no time for fun, mate. Time it's just work now. It's just work. Um, By the way, there was, uh, I think it was for my birthday episode, the episode I was, where it was my birthday, Dio Game did the timestamps saw... for me. He did a good job they as good, well. They were good timestamps. Yeah, yeah. They were, he did a really, really good job of the timestamps in that episode. So that was a nice birthday present. Probably the best birthday present. <laughs> but I didn't have to do the timestamps. It was good. Oh, was really, man. Really good. Um, well, look, we uh, we're nearly two hours in. Uh, I am I am pretty tired, so we've still got we, community questions. We've still got community questions, so should we have a, a, a focus on them? A bit. I mean, in terms of other other things to talk about, was games, with gold, news, really? games with gold, three sixty titles are dropping in oh, October. I know you have a little so rant about that. I'm so disappointed in that because the three sixty games are all I care about. Yeah, because we keep them. It's it, like. Uh, the quality is subjective. The quality of those games is very subjective and it probably hasn't been the best for a long, long time. But I still love the idea that any OG or 360 game they gave us is it's ours to forever. keep forever. Beyond. Yeah. So it's it's like even, even if the quality of the Xbox One games improves, 
which there's no guarantee of that, mind you. Like it's not like the announcement turned around and said, "Ah, oh, well, this will allow us to improve the quality of the Xbox One games I give away." All they've done really is take more value away from gold, and and to me, genuine value because, like I said, you keep those games forever. It was it was a, I think a major advantage gold had over PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now, over everything. Yeah, like because if your subscription lapsed, you keep They were things. giving you free games that are yours. If you let gold lapse, those 360 games are still yours. Yep. Like, I, I think people just forget that. Like, that's that's a really big deal, I think. Um so I'm I, me personally am bitterly disappointed. I found myself on comicbook.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As my, in one of those terrible people are upset articles. Yeah, yeah. That that they hate. wrote an article about how Xbox fans are upset about 360 games being re- removed from gold. And my tweet was the one you <laughs> I hate I hate modern modern website journalism. People are upset. I'm Xbox fans. (laughs) (laughs) I represent you all. Suck me. God God almighty. We're doomed. Oh, Uh, but that was funny. I look again, I'm I personally am disappointed. I understand a lot of people don't give a rats. I I just like the idea we were getting those games permanently. They they were what I looked forward to the most each month. Now it's like, who cares about gold now? Like if they don't, if the 360 and OG well, games aren't there, who cares? Maybe they're like, timing up for a nice, we're dropping Xbox Live Gold in October. It's no longer necessary post. Who knows? Man, now that would be something. If, that if, would they, be something. if, they, if they countered that and said, look, by the way, gold, the reason we announced this is because gold's going away altogether. And online multiplayer is free. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm happy to give up 360 games for that. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's, you know, maybe that will be a thing. Um, it's Gamescom in August. Microsoft yes. have confirmed they will be there with yes. some further updates on games coming out in the next 12 months. I'm thinking about actually going to Gamescom. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, you know, I have, yeah. So, um, I'm going to see more time on your hands, a bit more freedom, a bit more time and freedom. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird to get used to, but, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, don't have to run anything by the committee anymore. Yeah. yeah. There's no yeah. permission to ask for you. Just get up and go. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um, it's so good. Mike, don't mind go to Gamescom, um, you know, meet some Xbox folks and, and are you into really terrible human body odor? Uh, to go. Yeah, I've I've been in a band, uh, you know. The, I've smelt things you wouldn't believe, so I'm I'm probably pretty used to it. Um, oh, and you're a dad, so uh, yeah, and I'm a dad. I've definitely smelt things that no one should really ever have to smell. Um, but yeah, so Gamescom's a thing. Uh, what else has happened? Halo, the Master Chief Collection. They're looking to add in, and they've partnered with some other developers that, within the community to bring back legacy and cut content like the yeah. original halo demo the, the halo 2 halo 2 e3 demo, demo level which so cool that's which, cool i mean this is the thing that bugs me uh, and if i had to verbalize you know in hindsight now when i look at previous halo games since that halo 2 e3 demo is none of them have captured the feeling of a city under siege like those kind of cool cutscene elements that happened mm. in that demo like watching that like turret and the building was like going crazy i was like this is the greatest thing i've ever seen and no halo game since that has kind of done something to that scale and mm-hmm. man one day one day um pepper pig is out on game pass next week yeah um, my son's i'm pretty excited. i'm pretty hype about it um Definitely giving that a download along with. Some I, I love, I love that they're doing that with Game Pass. They put, they've got the new Paw Patrol game. Yep, is on Game Pass. My son was, my son saw it because he went to the Game Pass section of the dash. He's like, oh, Paw Patrol. I'm like, man, I love this is how they're gonna get these kids games. It's the best. Like, can you imagine if we had this when we were oh, kids? Like, oh my god, moment. that just like, oh, 
Oh, do you, you know just what? Just go, select the game, and download it. Do you know what I really love about this particular one is my little girl loves watching her brother play games, but she gets really bored of mm. watching him play and watch uh, kids' YouTube Minecraft videos and then yeah. copying the Minecraft video and building the thing that the guys Yeah, my son does that too. All right, infuriating. And, she, and I, I'm going to make a point of, sorry, Jacob, it's Harriet's turn and we're going to play Peppa Pig together. And this is going to be her mm. first kind of foray. And, you know, cause she loves Peppa Pig. So, yeah. Oh, like I said, my son saw, we watched a video on it and he saw the character creator where you make your own Peppa Pig character. He's like, oh, I'm going to make the <laughs> dog or I'm going to make, man, he got, I can't wait. I can't oh, wait. He, he loves it. He, he just saw the Ryan racing game and downloaded it. Yeah. One of the Paw Patrol games downloaded it. Oh, it's the, I love it. It's so good that just any, they just, I love, you know, just ignore the idiots on Twitter and social media because I've, I've seen all the Twitter trolls and like, oh, Xbox, you know, here's Sony and Nintendo putting out all these bangers and Microsoft's got Peppa Pig. It's like, mate, as a dad, I prefer that. Like I prefer what Xbox is doing on game pass. Like you've got to think of kids too, man. Like kids grow up to be adults. So yeah. you attach those memories as children. If if as children you're spending most of your time on Xbox because Xbox has Peppa Pig and Xbox has Ryan and Xbox has Paw Patrol and Xbox, has, those kids are going to grow up and they're going to have fond memories of playing those games on Xbox. That's how it starts. That's how you all became the fanboys you are. You were playing <laughs> Playstations as kids and now you're playing Playstations as adults. That That's how it starts, people. Like, that's how I have it works. To admit that when that list dropped and and I was like, oh no, I have to make a day one video. I was like, this is a long, this is a long list. Hey, but even then, there were two games that were not put on the official list that are also yes, out on. They game dropped Pass. out of nowhere. Three, three, three games. games. So I'm going to have to put them on the next day one update video. Um, so I will cover those at some point. And we but... did a review for House Flipper. It's fantastic. You should go yep. watch it. Mm. And power wash simulator as well. I'm yes. definitely having a go on that. Oh, drowning in little games. Um, hey, hey, Brit. I don't know if you're joking or not, but yeah, if a bluey video game comes out, Microsoft should be doing everything in its power to get that on Game Pass day one. That would, would be the biggest. Oh, I would mate, kill if they put, bluey video. Can game. you imagine if they put? A, oh, they'll do a bluey game. There's, there's no doubt they will do a bluey game. And can It'd you have imagine? to be written by the people that actually make Bluey, though. Like, I oh, of that... course, it would have to be those people doing it. But what I'm saying is, if they did a Bluey game similar to the Peppa Pig one, like an interactive cartoon type of thing, yeah, mate, and they got that on Game Pass Day One, that would be like one of the biggest Game Pass Day One <laughs> exclusives. They I could would be, ever I would have. be super hype. And uh, oh I just want to call out. Isildur's Bane in the chat. Is it me or is Harriet the most British name ever? Oh, 100% it is. Her middle name is Primrose. So suck it up. That's There's even some more real Brit, Brit naming there. Um, yeah. What else have we got? God of War Ragnarok was dated with a CG trailer for November 9th. I told you I wasn't going to get delayed. Yeah. I kept saying 100%. It's 2022. <laughs> my, I, my, my confidence wavered a little bit at one point. Yeah, because I had a friend, I had a friend who was working at Santa Monica briefly. I hope I can say that now, because they don't work. Anyway, I had a friend who was working at Santa Monica for a little bit, who was like, "Oh, I'm not as a hundred percent as I want. I'm still like ninety percent, but ten percent has creeped in." And I'm like, "Oh no," because on the show, I was like, I think people were asking in the chat or something, or you asked, or someone asked me about. God of War and 2022. And I was like, no, 100%. It's coming out in 2022, 100%. And then after that, I got a DM and they're like, oh, 90%, 85. And I was like, oh, no. no. Well, someone's going to take a clip of me saying 100% and then it gets delayed. And it's like, oh, it's coming. Flying again. Um, Oh, um for spoken for spoken did get delayed though it did get delayed in the end not for the reason i said it would but, but it got the it got we take the, that I mean, as a win well yeah because a lot of people were giving me crap saying that you said for spoken was going to get delayed it's like well no i didn't i said they're thinking of delaying it if if they believe they can get 
Final Fantasy 16 out the door. Like that was very conditional. And if you watch that episode with Zorka, I said that I find this a bit weird and it's a bit of a funny thing. In the end, it did get delayed, probably not because of Final Fantasy. It got delayed probably because it got a war. It's time to move <laughs> and, out the fucking way. And a bunch of other games it was getting out of the way of, but it still yeah. got delayed in the end, didn't it? And everyone yeah. was like giving me so much crap saying, oh, Full Spoken's not getting delayed. Ha, ha, ha. You lied. You lied. It's like, well, it's not, yeah. I still don't Speak understand too how soon. People, people just, I'm shocked that people still think I just come up with stuff and like, even though I've posted my DMs on Twitter before, I've posted my DMs on I, uh, publicly. People, I'm like, I, I keep telling You're only telling as good as your last guess... thing you got right, unfortunately. And then they they forget about that after a while and go back to the thing you got wrong. And it's just uh, whatever. And oh, it's not well, even yeah, that you're because... getting it wrong. It's like you're saying, hey, this is what I'm hearing from people. Oh, There's a reason that... it's called the rumor mill. It's not the yeah, Nick like, says I, it's happening. I don't know how much more open mill. I can be. Like, you I can't. don't understand. Like, I've told everyone. I, people it's, still say, oh, you just made up lies. It's like, do, like I You can make up some way better lies. Like, I care about Sly Cooper. How many times have I told people, I don't care about Sly Cooper. Like, if I'm going to make something up, I'm going to make it up about something I care about. Like, I'm going to lie and be like, Power Stone's coming out. Oh, Maximo 3's coming out. Like, that's stuff I care about. Like, why would I lie about I'm on, I'm on yeah. Xbox era. Why am I going to make up lies about PlayStation? Like, none of our audience wants to hear about my PlayStation rumors. Or Fortnite. Why am I going to make those up? Question. Uh, on the subject oh, of rumor mill, do we do we have a rumor mill this week? Uh, there was one that I said I was going to hold over, um, but I have to find it because my, my memory is... Funny. Um, hold on. Let me find it. Shit. Let me find it. He's going to find it. He's going to find it. There was if one we... that I said I was going to hold over. Yeah, I remember you saying that um, we're wait till next week. Oh, man. Where I put reminders it? in the private chat. Yeah, I know. But I, I, I like you, to you have got... it in front of me. Yeah, you got to let I me like the... organize your um, OneNote. As, as, as a producer, I'll take care of it all. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. It was... Okay. Okay. Uh, so no. Are we, uh, so are we going to do you... the room? Okay. Yeah, let's do okay. a room mill. This feels a very loose episode. Yeah. yeah. Jesus loose Christ. is fun. I'm dreading, <laughs> I'm dreading these the time button. stamps. Podcast is not responsible for websites presenting these rumors as facts. Back to us. Okay. It's the rumor. Now, so, it, you know, it's funny, you know, apparently Sly Cooper has completely invalidated Top Spin, the Battlefield staff, Persona, you know, let's just ignore all that because of Sly Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Everyone will, so a lot of people will remember about a year and a half ago, I put out a tweet saying that, oh, Microsoft is trying to work with Sega to get a pretty major Japanese RPG on Xbox on Game Pass. And then about a month or two later, I tweeted the Persona thing. Yeah. And again, yeah. I've always said all they're doing is they're trying to get Persona. Having the conversation. Onto then. Xbox. So they're, they're trying because, you know, Atlas is Atlas. And have a look how long it took. It took a year and a half for them to get that deal done. That's true. So I keep telling people, be patient. Be patient. Just because something's on the, the rumor mill, A, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, and B, it doesn't mean it's going to happen the very next day. Yeah, that's fair. Or if I put something on Twitter, look how long Persona took. I mean, a even Valheim. Time. I got that DM for when Valheim got announced. My guy, I think I said it, like DM'd me. Because we forgot we never said anything about Valheim. I got the DM for Valheim last March and completely forgot about it. Wow. Anyway, so I said back a year and a half ago that Microsoft's trying to get a, you know, franchise on Xbox. Well, that's happening again, but not with Sega. Ooh. 
Who's it, who, who so they Microsoft is working with NIS. Is it NIS? Yeah. NIS, NIS, NIS. NIS America, I think. Is that the publisher? Uh, think, God, I have to so. look it up. Yeah, NIS is a publisher. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it. NIS or NIS. Is yeah, is it is it NIS America? I think you're right. Yeah, it's, it's, it is NIS America. I don't know if you pronounce it NIS America or it's just NIS. They are working, I've been told that Xbox is working with NIS America to bring some games or maybe a particular series to Xbox. Now, like my persona tweet, I can't say right now what that those games or that series is. Yeah. I can't say that right now. I'm not allowed, just like I wasn't allowed with Persona back then. But we're just it's just the conversation. The conversation just, they're, like... they're working on it. It's a deal they are working on, just like they were working on Persona. So please stop getting upset. And if you don't see whatever this series is, if you don't see it next week, it doesn't mean that it was a lie. It's just Yeah. Yes, they are working to try, and that's why I'm not gonna say what these games are or what this series is, because if I say it, then people are going to keep busting me about it every week or so. They're going to keep DMing me and busting me about it. And then when it doesn't happen in six months, they're going to be like, well, you lied and made it up just like persona. And look, persona ended up happening. So please have patience. I've said it now because I was told to say it now. It's not, you know, this isn't freaking scripted. I get what I get. Don't get upset. Yeah. I think that's fair. I'm sure at some time I'll be able to say what these games are at some stage, just not right now. Fair Um, enough. So for those people that know NIS America, I think they're like, they do Japanese games. They import. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just showed everything they make. It's a lot of anime looking stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for, for those familiar with that um, publisher, I'm sure what there'll they might be a know lot of from guesses Game coming Pass through. I'm already is, seeing my um, friend, the Winter Shoulder, putting a bunch of guesses through. Um, I'm, I'm seeing all the guesses. Um, again, if you watch this show, you know me. If I could say I would, I can't say right now. I know what the, the, the games are. But just like I knew it was Persona back when I tweeted about Persona. I just wasn't allowed to say Persona at the time. So when the time comes that I can say what these are, I will. But remember, patience. Like, there's no guarantee it even happens. Just like there was no guarantee Persona was going to happen, but it did eventually. It it took a while, but it did eventually. I'd be surprised if this also didn't happen, given the success my Sega had with Yakuza. Now, look at the buzz that Persona has created, the Dragon Quest games. I'd be surprised if this deal didn't happen, but be aware it's a deal they are working on. They are working to bring these games. So Darkwing Duck. Yes. Please. Like, I don't know how much more open I can be about that. Fair enough. So, yes, that's the rumor mill. NIS America. Going to be bringing some games. More games is always good, even if they're probably... Especially Japanese games. Look how well they're doing in Japan. Yeah, they're doing... Smashing it. Good for Microsoft. They just surpassed 250k consoles sold in Japan. That's crazy. I never thought Microsoft would do that. Honestly, that's got to be the Series S. They're just looking at the size of the PlayStation 5 and being like, nah. (laughs) You know what would do real well in Japan? Portable Xbox. Oh, That would do real well in Japan. Can you imagine? The dream. Yeah, I can imagine. I can't imagine. imagine exactly. Like a portable can imagine. Series S. Oh, the Series S P. That's what it should be called. The Series S. Just portable. the Series P. Just the Series P. Nah, it's SP because then you're saying it's like a Series S, but it's portable. But portable. Yeah, yeah. It's SP. And it then rolls you got off the, the throwback. You, you tap into the Nintendo fans as well that have yeah, that fondness yeah, for the yeah. Game Boy Advance SP. Yeah. See. Yeah. The PSP. No. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> okay. <Hey. laughs> Um, other news, <laughs> other news. Yeah. Um, I, on another uh, kind of halo front, uh, Paul Batone, uh, Bungie veteran, has joined 343 as studio technical director. And you know, uh, 
I'm going to take this as a sign that 343 are genuinely, hmm, this is harder than we thought, this live service stuff. And they're, I think they're making some big investments in terms of actually hiring actual full-time, actual people working at 343. Not contractors, not temps, but full-time loaded positions to make video games. Now, hopefully we'll see the results of that. But I have been playing Halo a bit. I just did the weekly this week. Um, oh, is there a weekly? It. Yeah, you know, uh, entrenched. I was is the, on. I was on. Just, like, I, like I took my son's Series S to Queensland and I played some Halo. There was no weekly, and that was just the other day. Did it it's, just appear? It's Tuesday to Tuesday, so it appeared Tuesday earlier this week, and it really? closes out Tuesday next week. It's entrenched, and it's the the entrenched event. Um, but when I say weekly, there's always a series of weekly challenges and you get mm-hmm. the get the thing. So, yeah, yeah, I've been doing them. It was really, do you know what the final challenge was for the week? What? Kill someone with a grenade. <laughs> I was like, this isn't hard. This is, this is grenade spam halo. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Honestly, they need to cut the starting grenades back to like one <laughs> for everybody. It's ridiculous. Because <laughs> it's honestly, it's just like you go in and it's like thing, 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 just grenades constantly. I haven't found that. The, the game, the, the Halo game that level? I found that the grenade spam got bad in, like World at Reach. War Veteran bad, was Reach. <laughs> yeah. Reach's oh, my God. Were, Halo were Reach. Else. I remember first jumping into Reach and you just, you'd play a multiplayer match and no one was shooting guns. Everyone was just throwing grenades, and it's like, what is happening right now? I'll tell you what, though. Go back and play Halo CE. Those grenades going off were like nuclear bombs. Nukes. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, it felt so good. But I just, man, those that, that was, I was traumatized by Reach. Oh, that was just oh, like, lock is what traumatized me in Reach. Oh, my God. I've stuck grenades. you. Uh, oh. Anyway, uh, and the last piece of news, um, that I'm, again, another game I'm semi-mostly probably interested in, Skull and Bones, got a big gameplay reveal. I know we we learned lots about it earlier. We've known year, about Skull you. and Bones info for a long, long time. <laughs> and when we got that, that info through... Document. Yeah, that was extremely interesting because of the the depth and the and the scale that they're going for. But yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing multiplayer. I'm seeing teaming up with friends. You know, um, yeah. This if this is a game that can be played from start to finish as co op, um, I would love to give it a go. And and certainly, if Ubisoft are kind enough to provide review code, um, I'd love to see if I could get. Uh, you know, I'll do like a review LAN, so we'll get some people in. We're, we're we, friends we with Capcom now. The whole thing. Yeah, we're friends with everybody. Yeah, they just, they're such excited. good friends that they just send things in. I didn't even know that Capcom game was coming in. Then all of a sudden, bam, here's a review code. Oh, man, yes, I'm Ubisoft very excited about us, the idea of Capcom. I'm going to ask for Ooh. four. There's a certain, fun, there's a yeah, certain be... game where you take part in fisticuffs with on the street people <laughs> on the streets. you looking and forward to that. I am excited about the idea of receiving a 25 digit enumerated code for that piece yep. of software yeah just... uh, all in all uh, the world is great and everything's going to be wonderful um there that... is one other piece of news oh go on what's the other piece of news? so apparently hideo kojima assassinated whoa 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 <laughs> careful not even in sarcasm because they put a tweet out saying that they will sue people so even if you said it as a joke, that's not. You know what made me laugh the most? That it was like the Greek news <laughs> that reported on that. I was like, Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> Jeez! That the Greek news used his image <laughs> and fell for a four chan post. Oh my god! I just, so when silly. I saw that on my feed on Twitter, I was like, "Why am I not surprised that it was a Greek news agency? Why am I not surprised at all?" But hey, I, I just Hideo Kojima it has not. That would be anyone. so stressful, though. Can you imagine? Like oh, seriously, man. we joke, but can you imagine the stress? Because that was global news outlets that were using his image, and this poor guy's walking the streets, man. Like he's walking the streets somewhere and his image. Now, he, he, Hideo Kojima is not known outside of the gaming sphere. 
Yeah. No one knows who he is outside of gaming I, and a little bit the movie industry, a little bit. But no one knows. So, so regular people who get their news and see this is the man who assassinated and this guy's walking the streets. Yeah. <laughs> so can you imagine? Like, um, I, that would, I would be so be very stressful. cross. Oh, my God. No wonder he wants to sue. Like, <laughs> yeah. I seriously. Would. Like, oh, my him. God. That would be... Wow. Like, yeah. I had a stressful week, and my face wasn't attached to anything. Like, if my <laughs> face was like an assassination. To an assassination, <laughs> I'd be pretty stressed out. Oof. Like, oh, um, my God. There was one other thing news. with yeah, Skull and Bones, two. John. Yeah. Um, it is 70 bucks in next gen only. So yeah. 70 pounds, 80 euros. I know. Oof. That is oof. It's a lot of money. But I don't have to buy many games anymore. So, you know, Game Pass can't give me everything yet. Uh, but there is actually some other news that I've got to mention. Uh, the new Robocop game actually looks surprisingly oh, cool. It looks good, doesn't it? Right? Like, that looks like, good. Dun, 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 you have to wonder. Like, I can't wait to hear him be like, dead or alive, you're coming with me. But you have to wonder how, whether they're going to bother or how they capture that uh, that satirical... The Paul Verhoeven... You know, yeah, you have to wonder if they're going to try gonna and try. capture that, how that translates into a video game. Well, they had some um, TV segment type stuff in the trailer, which suggests that they're going to have a little bit of that tongue-in-cheek, but the, the gun blasting looked suitably good. Yeah, and, uh, and actually looked nice. Face off. Yeah, it's all right. It looks, it looks fun enough. Um, yeah. So, great, great. Great to see a game being made and and set in that old school, like with the eighties kind of looking fashion as well. From the was the last movie. time we saw a RoboCop game sixteen bit? No, Mega Drive, Super Nintendo. No, there's been one bef- since then. Surely, no, I could I be wrong. Know. I'm sure we've yeah. had a more. It was a 2014 game. RoboCop game that was a free to play shooter on Android. Uh, no, I don't know uh, what I'm thinking of. Was he in Mortal Kombat? He was in Mortal Kombat. That's but what that's I'm as of. a character in Mortal yeah, Kombat. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. was this Robocop 3 was on SNES, I think, in Mega Drive in 1991. There was an original um, Xbox, PlayStation 2, and Windows PC game for Robocop in 2003. <laughs> What's there really? Dave in the chat, it will be a Robo flop. Yeah, look at that. Robocop on an original Xbox. I didn't how did I not know this? I played Windows. the original Xbox Robocop. By Titus. Wow. Can't remember that, but yeah. There you go. Found screen. Wow. GameCube, PC, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. Wow. 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 I did not know that. Da, 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 I love Robocop. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's good, good like thinking as well. Have you seen? Have you seen the really, really not safe for life Robocop? Sorry, everybody. Penis video. No. I don't know if I want to see it. <laughs> you do want to see it? I'll I'll find a link and I'll send it to you. But basically, you know the scene oh, where he I'll stops play it on the... stream. No. No, don't. <laughs> no. Um, but you know the scene where he shoots through the dress with the two guys that are attacking the woman? Yeah. And he shoots yeah. the guy in the dick? Yeah. Well, they they made a parody of it, and basically they they copied the location, the look of the film, and the art, and they had all these more bad guys coming in, and he's just shooting every single one of the <laughs> bad guys in the dick, and like it gets more and more gratuitous. I think gratuitous. I might have seen that actually. I think it's I actually so have. Good. Now that you've described it, I think I have. <laughs> Honestly, if you're watching this, go find that video. It is very very funny if you have the humor um, of the twelve year old like I do. Um, Oh, and, and the last thing I wanted to do was to pause for a moment and let Jesse tell us all about all the content coming to Xbox Era in the coming week. No pressure, Jesse. Off the top of your head, go. Off the top of my head, well, I've got a review to, coming tomorrow or coming Monday. Nick should have Klonoa coming out um, very yes. soon. <clears throat> Tomorrow's fine if it needs to be. Um, we ha- I have a review coming up, as I said, for Capcom Arcade Second Stadium coming you're working on three things essentially um (laughs) only one with an actual date so um i mean christ as dusk falls 
they, 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 you can't give impressions, but people know these things exist. So yes. as dusk falls, closer to launch, um, Blade Runner, as you see fit, and Ghost Runner, if you can ever get good at it. Um, <laughs> so it's we, need to, we need to try and get MVG on to talk about Blade Runner. I want. I'd love to have a conversation with him about it. A candid conversation, because yeah, because they didn't have the the actual game. So I really, so much. I really you know. feel for them. Like it's wonderful yeah. that a whole generation of people on console can play the game because it's a genuine classic. It paved the way. But there's there's a lot of atmosphere that has been lost as a part of the conversion, and that's that's the shame of it. Um, but it's still it's still 100% worth a play through if you can get past the clunkiness of it. A bit. And GOG did put up the other version. They put yeah. it back up after delisting it, the um, scum or whatever it was. Well, they didn't. They delisted <clears throat> it from buying it on its own, but they said if you buy yeah. the new version, you'll get this anyway. So oh, okay. that was the compromise that I think that they came mm. with. But yeah. Ah, um, okay. But yeah, uh, yeah. Lots of lots of stuff still happening. We've even had lots of stuff. Months. Yeah. Yeah, we, even we, though it's been a slow yeah. month, we're at like 12 reviews or something already this month. Yeah. Pretty good. Just Xbox era, kicking butt, taking names. No one's yep. no one's resting. Um, and that's it. And that leads us to community questions, which are all powered by our wonderful patrons. Um, you guys are lovely. Um, and if you want to ask community questions, you can just join the patron, which is which is yep. great. Um I got uh we've got some of the community questions already out of the way right so yes, the ones that were related to hypercharge and we've got a few left and then, and then yep. we'll call it. god these timestamps are going to be the worst now yeah uh hi them g watch that nintendo direct that i recap pretty good show although no sign of golden eye maybe the exact the game came out where games on is still going on, not me slandering it, but I do hope the game comes out to appease the fans that like the game. I read that as it was. If not going to be shown, then damn, what a shame the game didn't get released or something. Also, any updates about the MS and Nintendo partnership? Have you bugged your sources on what's going on by any chance? Just curious. Look, I'm glad Microsoft announced they're going to be at Gamescom because I'm still... Surely that's where GoldenEye gets shadow dropped mm. and announced. Well, the, the anniversary is in August and Gamescom oh, okay. is in August, August and so. Microsoft is at Gamescom. So if, if it doesn't happen there, then I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. Opening Night because... Live is the day of the um, actual anniversary, the same exact day. Yeah. Oh, well, come on. Like, come on. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Come on. Like, <sighs> It's going to happen. It'll uh, be fine. I mean, It'll be fine. How many times have we going to go over everybody. it? Why are the achievements appearing on the website? Like, seriously, like, come on. Good. Uh, the go only on thing I could come to, if it doesn't get, if it doesn't get shadow dropped on the day of its anniversary, which is when Gamescom is apparently, then I'm, I have to assume it's a Ukraine-Russia thing because aren't they Russians you were going against in GoldenEye? Yes. I, like I, I can't. I don't understand what else it could be. Ah, uh, come on! Russians have been bad guys in movies for like decades. Yeah, I know. Fine. That's why I find that a weird reason not to release a twenty-five-year-old video game. Yeah, from the it's Nintendo a silly 64. reason. It's but a silly anyway, reason. It is. Uh, updates about the Microsoft Nintendo partnership? Nope. Not a no, sausage. Nothing. Sorry, I, I, I don't know why. Like I said, a, a part of me wishes I actually had been a liar. And just taken the W and said, yep, that partnership was Banjo. That's what it was. It was Banjo in Smash and Banjo on Nintendo Online. That was the partnership. I wish I had done that because then it's a W and people can leave me alone about it. No, I haven't had an update yet on the thing I was told about. And it's like well overdue from what I was told, but... Plenty of stuff gets overdue. We're still waiting on Ubisoft Plus and what's going on with Ubisoft and Game Pass. Yeah, true. True. All sorts true. of weird stuff's happening like that at the moment. I mean, like I said, look how long Persona took. Things a year can and take a half. A little while. A year and a half it took. Hades Man. took eight months from when we said it was coming to Game Pass to when it did. It took eight months. It's mental. People just need to calm down. Calm the farm. Instant gratification generation, man. 
you know? Mate, just calm the farm. Anyway, Morventus. As always, pick one or both, even if you typically always pick both. It's <laughs> true. Did y'all enjoy having a break in the podcast? I don't know. I, I did and I didn't. I, I, I didn't like missing an episode. I didn't like doing it. Uh, and then, trust me, it was a last minute call. We had the episode queued up and ready to go. It was on YouTube yeah, queued yeah. up. I had done the art for it. Uh, I was about to put out the tweet and everything for it. And it was just, I, I couldn't, like, I, the, we. my parents have an apartment up there. And that's yeah. where we stayed. And I just wasn't sure what the setup was going to be. Like, in hindsight, in hindsight, I wish I had taken this surface with me. I probably could have made it work. I probably, if I really, really, really wanted to push, I probably could have made it work. No one needs that kind of pressure, though, man. You know, but it was like, yeah, like especially because I was off already. It was like, yeah, and I wasn't sure if I could get a guest. Like Joe was like, yeah, yeah, I'll jump on, but it wasn't like a hundred percent. Joe was going to jump on, and then Grub was going to jump on, but that wasn't a hundred percent. And I'm like. Man, this is going to be hard. Like, I, I don't know if I can get someone on with me. There's barely any news anyway. I, I don't know how much I can trust the internet in the room I was going to have to yeah. do it in. Like, too, it many, just too many challenges. Too many variables. And I was like, man, I was like, you know what, bugger it. We'll just, we'll just skip away. As much as you, I hate it, we'll you know what? It it's fine. I mean, I, we, yeah, the nutshell sure was we, I didn't have a break for for a particularly fun reason. Um, but uh, so I don't, I wouldn't say I enjoyed the break, um, but yeah, you know, it was, I, I didn't guess... mind having the sleep in like, yeah. cause the night before we, we drove two hours to the gold coast to watch the football. And then we were at the football for two or three hours, then drove two hours back. So I didn't get home till like 1230 at night. And Oof. by the time I went to bed, it was like one, 2 AM. So it would yeah. have been tricky getting up <laughs> yeah, not yeah. long after to then try and cobble together a podcast. So I did, from that perspective... I think we made the right call. In just yeah, we probably general. made the right call. Yeah. Ah, uh, oh, that's news we should have talked about. Viva Pinata trademark got renewed. Should we expect it to get ported to the Windows phone or other devices? Well, that's interesting. That Because Viva Pinata's trademark wasn't the only one that got renewed. So no. it was Blast Core. I know. Interesting. Yeah, there Who was knows? something I was going to say about that, but um, and I got the go ahead to say it, but then I went to run it by someone, and that someone was like, "I don't think that's right." And after what oh. just happened with Sly Cooper, I'm like, maybe I'll just hold back on this one. Yeah, <laughs> just maybe this one I'll just hold back on just to get a few more things. They do need to but, make a new Viva Pinata. Because yeah, I had I had a fairly stressful week, and I'll say Jez reached out to me when he saw everything I was copying online. Yeah, yeah, Jez reached out to me, which I appreciate. Bless him. And just yeah, he gave some advice and stuff, and yeah, we had a bit of a chat. So yeah, this thing about Viva Pinata and Blast Core, I'll just I'll hold off for a sec. But there may be stuff going on there. I hope Viva so. Pinata and I'd Blast love Core. a modern Viva Pinata with mobile. Oh, man. Blast Core, <sighs> I never played. Blast Core, I never played on Nintendo 64. It's very um, fun. Sorry? Blast Core is a very fun game. I is enjoyed it. I, it, I, I, it, it was one replay. of the only Nintendo 64 games I didn't play. It's in yeah. Rare Replay, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It's very yeah. fun. You should play it. <laughs> I just yeah. saw Hugh he, he in the chat. I just went and watched that Robocock video. That's brutal. <laughs> Honestly, if you're squeamish, don't watch it. But if you <laughs> if you if you find that kind of thing amusing, definitely watch it. Yes. Um, uh, okay. Speaking of Hugh, huge question. Ah, um, <laughs> hey guys, hope you enjoyed your break. Also, welcome Joe. Now he says welcome, but then yeah, he there wasn't actually a question a for Joe. Hypercharged question. Um, this week I have a few hypothetical saucy and potentially unlikely takes, which I'm hoping will spark some discussion. With Xbox seemingly reluctant to work on licensed properties, 
do you think there is a potential future where Microsoft acquire all of Warner Brothers Discovery, not just WB Games? Microsoft are one of the few tech giants without a movie TV, sh- TV streaming service. In addition, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery own loads of big pop culture IPs, including the whole DC Comics roster. HBO is also one of the larger streaming services. We have been asked this question numerous times. We've yes. actually been asked this question a lot. And I've always said that I could see a world where Microsoft does that. And, like and they jump in. And I was the pessimist that was like, they've only just started to get their games. Yeah, but this would be a Microsoft purchase. This would be a Microsoft purchase, not an Xbox purchase. Well, Bethesda arguably is a Microsoft In this world, Microsoft would buy WB Discovery and own everything that comes with it. So then they would take all the Warner Brothers stuff for a movie streaming service, just like how Amazon added MGM. They would then take all the gaming studios, add them to Xbox. They'd own all that IP and do whatever they feel they need to do with it. I, I could see a world where Microsoft does that. Don't yes, get me wrong. I see before. the I see the benefits of it, but you know, I think I think considering Activision Blizzard is huge, I think it is the largest tech acquisition ever. Correct ever. me if I'm wrong. Ever, and it's Microsoft, and it's for gaming. I think. You know, the reason we saw Crystal Dynamics and IDOS Montreal and those teams slip by is because Microsoft are not making acquisitions while this is going on. Like they might be having discussions, but they're not going to be pulling the trigger until this is done and dusted and it's secured and locked in. And Mm. I think everybody that's on the acquisition hype train and people saying, oh, it's going to prevent them, not strictly true, but Microsoft probably just don't want any additional eyes on them right now let's just get this one over the line and then there'll be someone in the uk didn't some um in the uk want to have a look at it now uh there's a mountain out of a molehill the uk side of you know like the ftc does investigations the uk or the europe side of things like yeah we're just going to check yeah it's standard procedure but gaming Mm. websites like to make headlines out of non-news um so yeah it's not they're opening an investigation. They're assessing the acquisition to see if an investigation is warranted, which is standard mm-hmm. procedure for any acquisition. Eh, you know, it's no news. It's I, I yeah, think yeah. I still think it's on target to clear later on this year. Um, that particular thing said that they would have a decision first of September. And I think if that goes clear, I think, you know, I think you and I were like October time when we've talked about this before. We were both team 2022 for completion of acquisition, right? So Let's see what happens. Um, but that would be one hell of a, a boon yeah. to end the year. Just boom, here's all the Activision games on Game Pass. Massive. Uh, but we did see uh, Activision or Blizzard make an acquisition. They, yes, they a Blizzard Pro, acquired. Pro Laureate Studios, which the guys yeah, made yeah. Spell Break. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if before, and I, I think I said this on, I think I said this on Twitter. I wouldn't be surprised if before the Microsoft deals goes through, if Activision makes another acquisition because because they still have to operate independently until they're fully until they're actually acquired they're still operating as if they are just the yep. Activision Blizzard on their own correct um so I wouldn't be surprised if there's another um acquisition there yeah and it was uh, a, it's proletariat games thank you proletariat I, knew, I, knew, I, I got the name nearly right <laughs> I'll take it um yeah yeah, they made the Spellbreak Battle Royale Magic game, which we we frustratingly we previewed because we were told it was early access, and then they were like, "No, no, no, it's the full game," and we were like, "Well, it's in early access. Like, we haven't re- reviewed it because mm-hmm. it's in early access." Oh, but could you just change it to review? And we were like, "Not, not really," until it's yeah. out of early access because you can't review an early access game. Like, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. It's, it's shut down now. But it was a cool little game for what it was. It, it was in Game Pass. Every season of it was a Game Pass Ultimate perk. Wow. <clears throat> mm. And it still didn't survive, sadly. Okay. There's two more parts to Hugh's question. Recently oh. on Breakfast with Boom podcast, King David of High and Lords predicted that Xbox will acquire Crystal Dynamics and IDOS from Embracer. Where do you stand on this? Personally, I think they would be a brilliant addition to Xbox and fill a big void in the current Xbox offering outside of Ninja Theory. I mean, well, I mean I... yeah, we, we've spoken about 
Crystal and Idos before and said that we think it's going to happen. I, I said many times that I it, it's it's a no brainer. Like it's a matter of when, not if. And then Embracer came in and swooped. But why would then Embracer then on sell them? Yeah, I think I, yeah. I I think there'd be more chance of Microsoft just buying Embracer. Yeah, <laughs> as opposed to Crystal and Ados because out of Embracer. Square sold those those studios with the IP. Or so Tomb change. Raider. You know, for for not very much money, which is really surprising considering the legacy of Tomb Raider. If I were in charge of Embracer, I'd be like, I'm not, I'm not selling this. Like, not or, not, or if they were to sell, it would be for a lot more than three hundred. Yeah, yeah, it would cost them a lot, and I think it's just unfortunate that Microsoft had uh, got this a partnership with this studio to work on perfect dark. They made their acquisition move. That move kicked off a lot of other moves in the market mm. that all kicked off because of Bethesda in the first place. And they, they missed out. It's just business. Never mind. They could make an ongoing deal with Embracer. Maybe Embracer would say, no, we want to make Tomb Raider with these teams. You know, it, it's all up. It's all up in the air. I, I would just, Buy Embracer. <laughs> just buy, yeah, just I, buy I Embracer and have like all those studios and IP under you, and be like, okay, and Embracer can continue running it the way they are. <laughs> we just own them. Yeah, and That's it all comes to it. Game Pass. Uh, with both fun. Xbox and PlayStation seemingly supporting PC releases now, do you feel they will continue to support Steam or gradually make their games exclusive to their own stores? Also, in a distant hypothetical future, what do you feel would happen if Xbox acquired Valve? I know this is unlikely. Do you think PlayStation would pull all of their games from Steam? Also, do you think Xbox would rebrand PC Game Pass to Steam Game Pass? That's a lot. Uh, uh, said, I have said before that I've been told that PlayStation are probably going to do their own launcher. Yeah. Um, with a plan for cross-buy and I'm hoping cross-save. I didn't get told that, but I'm hoping cross-save. Um, whether Sony would then pull their games off Steam and Epic? I don't know if they would. I don't think so. Because what would happen is, my assumption is that Sony will put in place incentive for you to get the game through their launcher, whether that be cross-buy, whether that be cross-save, whether that be other incentives. Because it would make no sense. Like, they're making money off Steam and Epic. Why pull your stuff? I think... I think so. Sony is slowly, slowly learning that all this exclusive hoarding isn't as um, financially uh, beneficial as it may seem. They're, they're discovering that there's more money in getting your games into more hands. Yeah, I think... I think Microsoft have experimented enough with not partnering with Steam and trying to compete with Steam instead. And instead, now they've settled on a path that is best of both worlds, right? They have their mm. launcher. And effectively, they're saying to consumers, you decide. You can have all of the games that we make as part of a subscription. Excuse me. Or you can choose to buy them, you know, as singular purchases via Steam and Steam will get a cut, but we have access to Steam's enormous audience of people that like to buy games. The end. It's win-win. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think the days of them trying to force things like Games for Windows Live or push people to their store is is over. You know, that I think that declaration and the precedent has been set now. They are partnered with Steam and then they'll probably partner with Epic and they'll probably partner with all the stores because... I don't think Microsoft care where you buy their game. I don't think they particularly mind losing 30% here or there because their goal is the subscription. Everything else is just cherries on top. But yeah. yeah. But no, they'll never acquire Valve ever. I, that would be considered no. a monopolistic move because you would be purchasing uh, a the leader of the market in terms of PC. And I think at that point, yeah, that would raise a lot of eyebrows. From my layman's perspective, anyway. But yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, 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 um. What's next? DA game. game. Hi, all. Quick question. 
Do you see the backwards compatibility program resuming briefly for Activision? My understanding is that licensing was the biggest barrier, but ABK made several games last gen with limited licensing issues. They just prefer to hoard all the stuff so they can remaster it and sell it again for full price. But ABK under Xbox, a lot of different goals. Look, I, I'd like to believe that that will happen. Like, I'd, I'd like to believe that that would happen because I don't, like, it can't hurt. Like, it can't hurt to bring more of those games into backwards compatibility. It'd be a great publicity move as well because people love the backwards compatibility program. So, to me, why wouldn't you? Like, why wouldn't you grab some of those games that don't have technical issues? Because remember, Jason told us it wasn't just licensing. Some of them had technical issues where a game just for whatever reason wouldn't work um, or had a lot of problems. So I'd like to hope that. I, I mean, I wouldn't expect any of the Marvel stuff, unfortunately, like X-Men Origins, yeah. Wolverine, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I'd love for that to happen. I don't know. I, I hope so, DA game. I really hope so. It would be nice. There's some crash nice. games. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they could do. But I hope so. I'll talk to Jason. I, did I? I may have asked Jason on Twitter. I'll have to see to see if I got a reply to it. I may have asked him. Okay. Uh, Bob Lopel. This is the last question. <clears throat> and we're coming up to three hours. Oof. Made up for not having an episode last week. Yeah. Uh, Bob Lopel. Hello. I just have two questions if you want to answer them. I do want to answer them, Bob. Yeah. So do I, I listen to a lot of Xbox content creators while, I, while I'm at work. And there is a lot of anger towards Microsoft for there being no first party games this week. This week? Did he mean this year? Uh, no, he's saying uh, the content creators who's been listening this week, there's a lot of... Oh, this week. Right, 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 right. Okay. Mostly say bad leadership is the reason. If that is true, should they replace Phil Spencer? I say no. But if there if there is bad leadership, it starts with Spencer. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting discussion, isn't it? Like, Phil, Phil oversees Xbox. Yes. But then Matt booty is the one overseeing first party studios true but he's just one man and they have a lot of studios um yeah you know but bethesda continues to run as its own thing owned by xbox so you can't really blame phil because Bethesda stuff is, you know, like Starfield. You can't blame Phil for the Starfield delay. Like I think, yeah, the, the nutshell is people like to list war and want to have where are Microsoft's, you know, first party, where are the big AAA bangers for my console in the year of 2022? And the answer is they're all coming in 2023 because of a multitude of reasons that can't mm. really be attributed to one single person's fault. Um, and I would argue... I would argue that bad leadership would be a boss saying, screw you guys, put the game out, cut those features. I want it out the door as a buggy, awful mess, which is what Microsoft used to do and have stopped doing. They've started giving Mm. their teams more time. And if a team genuinely says this isn't ready, then the leadership will listen instead of forcing the issue for the sake of yeah i know but 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 it goes back to that discussion we've had where how how hands off do you be yeah like to me there's a limit to me there's a balance that needs to be struck yeah between being totally hands off and being too overbearing There, there needs to be a middle ground because in in the end like like we were discussing with Joe about feature creep and, oh, let's add this feature, let's add this feature, let's add this feature. How long do you go on for? Because yeah. those features then need testing, they then need polish, they then need this, they need, like, there has to be a balance. Like, there has to be It all a comes point down where... to project and time management. That's what, yeah, that's like, what this is. <laughs> and, yes, the buck stops with Phil ultimately, just like in sport, the buck stops with the coach. And look, But, yeah, it's a... It's an interesting discussion. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't fundament- know. fundamentally, do I wish I was playing Redfall this year or Starfield this year? Or yeah, sure. You know, it's a, yeah, I'd love to be, but they're not ready yet, and I'd much rather play them when they're ready. Um, I, I, look, I'd also say that if you're listening to content creators being angry, <laughs> don't. 
uh, how do I how do I put this without disparaging? Don't like it's, it's all very console worry. Like it, there's no shortage of games to play, is there? Exactly, but it's just, not just, just that. Those it's, games, it's algorithm aren't... driven. Yeah, like just because those it's games aren't from anger. first party, so like so in 2023 now, it's appearing like there's going to be this glut of Xbox first party games. What's Sony got for next year? Yeah. How long so are we going to then have the reverse now? Like, are all those same content creators going to then generate clicks by saying, well, Sony's 2023 is really dry. And Micah, it's just the, like, who cares? Like, play something else. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, such, a, a, it's such a boring thing. Like, who gets angry? Like, angry about it. I can understand buying something and being broken and being angry. But being angry that something isn't out yet. Like, do you know what I saw in the news earlier this week? I saw a rumor that the Duffer brothers who did Stranger Things, which I started yes. tonight on Netflix, so they're Duffers. making rumor, they're making a serialized television version of one of my favorite books of all time, The Talisman, which is by Stephen King and Peter Straub. And it tells the story of a 12 year old boy that has to travel from one side of America to the other to save his mother who is dying of cancer. It is an incredible book. And as soon as I saw that, I was really angry that it wasn't out yet. No, I wasn't. Yeah. I was really excited that it might exist at some point in the future is all my point is. So how about everybody just chill out? And content creators getting angry, it's all for clicks, in my opinion. Like, I can yeah. understand being angry over some things, but being angry over your video game console having less video games, there's no, there's no reason to be angry. It's just dumb. Anyway, yeah, mm. uh, there was a bonus question as well to this little, this little ditty. This last question, I might add. Yeah. Um, do you think if Microsoft had a good record of releasing good finished games like Sony, will people still be mad about there being no first-party games for 2022? Because <clears throat> we didn't read that part. Um, huh. I don't know. If Microsoft had a know. good record of releasing good finished games like Sony... Yeah. I mean, will well, people I, still be mad about there being no first party games for 2022? I don't get uh, it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get this think question. so. I don't get this question. No, I get it. I get it. Like, and that this question speaks to MCC. You know, there, there are certain things Sony gets a pass for that Microsoft doesn't. Like, you know, Sony has a rep for this stuff, but they've had plenty of games launch buggy. Returnal this is what I mean. Horribly, Days Gone launched horribly. Um, Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, the Spider-Man games were kind of like not game-breaking buggy, but just funny glitching buggy. Like I had quite a few glitches, in, glitches, just glitches in Spider-Man. My game never broke. I never lost progress. Just all glitches. Those, but there were funny little open-world glitches in Spider-Man. I got plenty of those. Um, so Sony's not immune to a lack of polish. Uh, Sony's polish comes different. Like Sony's polish is just in the visual quality and the look and feel of, but they still a lot of their games still suffer from those same big AAA open world glitchy bugginess that almost all those open world games suffer from. Because can you imagine the testing involved in no. an open world game? Well, no. Like, and did you read that story about Cyberpunk, where apparently they're they're suing the QA team or something mm, like that because, because the, the QA, QA team, team didn't, didn't tell them about a lot of stuff. That one was that's iffy. If that is it, a bit iffy. Not. I saw the story, yeah. but I don't know how. Yeah, to I saw the it. story it was a random, too. It was a random YouTuber, and and sites ran with it without fact checking him and people uh, questioning it. See, this is why I'm glad we allegedly. Have you on our side. It's all alleged. All allegedly, but I mean, the, the question itself feels a little bit like it's from 2015. You know, I can picture get Jeff Gersman sitting on the store at the sofa at E3 going, Phil, what's it going to take to stop releasing broken games, right? Because that was a reputation was owned, and I guess maybe that's still sticking for some reason. But if I look at 2021, Flight Sim, Psychonauts 2, uh, they released a ton of games, and I don't think any of them were reported as being buggy or glitchy. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, their issues were always online servers for both Halo and Forza Horizon 5 had online server issues, but the actual games themselves worked. Well, fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can argue, oh, oh where's just... my content in Halo? But that's not a bug or a glitch. That's just time and money. Yeah, again. I just Project think. Management coming back. 
Yeah, I just think people. I don't know. It, it's it, gaming is weird. Like, you know, with, with the generation of kids growing up playing stuff like Roblox, I feel like games launching semi incomplete or buggy or glitchy is not going to be as big a deal in 10, 15 years' time. No. When those kids are all older gamers because they grew up on Roblox. Like, my son plays Roblox all the time and those games just bug out on him, crash, and he's just like, the game glitched. <laughs> he just leaves and starts something else. Like, yeah. he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't rage. He doesn't get upset. He's like, baba, my game glitched. The okay, but And he just quits <laughs> Roblox and jumps into Minecraft or exits Roblox and jumps back into Roblox and jumps into a different game. Like, they, don't, they just don't care like they just don't have that same level of entitlement that i think our generation have because we grew up in a time when games couldn't be patched so our games had to release working they had to they didn't have a choice there there was no there's no other way your your game had to work you know what the version Um, of the patch was it was the 19 different versions of street fighter 2 we we would just (laughs) get the same game over and over again Full price. Like there, there was no such thing as patches. So f- for 20 years, 30, so until the advent of, of the 360 generation, because remember the 360 did something revolutionary for developers. It allowed them to fix a game with a patch that was like three meg. Yeah. Remember those three meg patches and 10 I meg patches we used to get? a ton of money for every time they had to patch it as well on 360. They, they used did. To have to pay used to cost them a lot of money. Nose. Yeah. But um, I mean, there's a reason back then publishers and platform holders did that. And then partly to your earlier point was to make sure the games, make sure your game works. Cause if it doesn't and you've made a big bug, you're going to have to pay for it. And, and, and I reckon that was a part of the reason I wouldn't be surprised if that was a part of the reason they made it expensive to patch a game to, yeah. to encourage them to make sure they got it right before they released. Because if you make it free to update, then a developer's like, ah, this is broken, but we'll, we'll patch it later. Don't worry about it. We we'll call that Steam. That, yeah, again, like... That's why review codes always come on Steam because you can put out anything there. But it's actually been quite hard to get console code because both console manufacturers are now really all about this needs to be in a good state before we'll approve it, Yeah, even for review code. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's funny that... You know, there's always two sides to a story. And I feel like in the in the social media driven outrage us versus them world we live in, a lot of that discussion and that nuance gets lost in the outrage. Like, you know, fr- from a development perspective, it would have sucked having your Xbox Live Arcade game being limited to 50 meg. But from a consumer perspective, it was incredible. You know, there's always that two sides to the coin. Like, yeah, you want to look after developers, but then some developers take advantage of releasing broken because maybe a patch is free and then that sucks for consumers, but it's great for developers that aren't as under as much pressure and stress. Like, it's there's so much there's so to much it, there's so many machinations. And like, it'd be nice to sit down one day. I'd love to have a podcast episode where we sit down with maybe. A couple of devs and we just talk that sort of stuff i would love to talk with um studio leads that deal with the project management and the feature you know like where ha, when is this done by where's my milestone what's the next one yeah to, I all love the way from from that conceptual to to launch because i think again you know all a lot of these questions a lot of the frustrations that gamers uh verbalize in, in twitter on forums all comes all comes down to not code or a gameplay idea it comes down to getting people to do what they say they'll do and sticking in their lane and getting it done mm. on time and and saying yep yeah, that's done locked don't add to it don't tweak it and then yeah. and, and just having that constant milestone hit milestone hit because the minute that first one is missed all of them are gone you can't catch up. Yeah. It's a runaway train. And I'd love to really get into the weeds with, so like, I'd love, there's so many behind the scenes stories that you could really 
really really dig into like and 343 is, is a great studio i'd love I'd lo- i wish that they could perhaps be more open about it i wish we'd seen something like the sprint or a making of where they talk about the real challenges that they had because with their reliance on contractual workers um and you know the original scope of the game reportedly was much larger which is why i think we're seeing you know that that the endless dlc campaign stuff because you think Mm. about it that woman was introduced and we kind of fought her but we didn't really get her her motivations too much it was very quick um there's 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 so much there um i agree that halo 5 prototype menu ui thing no oh god i wish that got in the game was it pretty someone leaked a prototype full 3d ui menu thing for halo 5 and it was incredible wow and then someone else who they actually used to be in the discord um the the stream w m monkey or something his name was who found this prototype footage of a halo vr game halo running on vr and man that looked good too the halo VR oh yeah that, that, i saw the well. halo vr thingy but yeah that is a lovely 3d menu isn't it stunning yeah. really i would have really loved cool. if that had made it into halo 5 that was beautiful i, I, I bet it just was a resource hog Probably. very flashy though looks oh looks great. looks great yeah very cool but that's anyway, it I'll, the bonus question I didn't oh, do the bonus there's question. There's always a bonus question. Go on then, bonus you question. You said it. You said I it. I know. I know. I uh, bonus question again. Do not answer if you don't want to. Do you think most gamers I just want to. games to play? And with almost 50 games that we know of coming to Game Pass within the next year, will satisfy 90% of gamers since Game Pass is more important to Microsoft than first party games. I'm not saying first party is unimportant. Thanks again. Love your podcast. My favorite of them all. Thanks, Bob. Oh. Um, that's well, that's what I was saying. Like, there's so much stuff to play. If it's not first party, who cares? Just play the game. Just play a good game. Who like you, like, you bought the console. If your problem is, well, I bought this console for the promise of first party games, well, don't buy a console for promises. Wait till it's got the stuff you want and buy it. I, I mean, what's I, hilarious is Starfield, if it made this year, that was the only other game that was probably going to come out, right? That's the only game that was confirmed before it was done. Redfall. Oh, yeah. No, Redfall was always summoned. No, it was summer this year. You're absolutely right. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Those two games were meant to be this year. Redfall, from the first trailer, I was kind of like, eh. And Starfield, I w- I'm going to try it because I love sci-fi, but I wasn't, I'm not excited and super hyped and quite, because I, I don't really, I haven't really enjoyed Bethesda games in terms yeah, of right. Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, etc. So for me, this year was kind of like already, eh, nothing's changed for me, <laughs> you know? Mm. And I think... I think that's more normal than perhaps many would care to admit. You know, remember everything in this sphere, you know, watching this podcast and interacting with us on a forum or, you know, going on Resetera or or any other gaming forum. And that's a bubble. It's a bubble Mm. that is not indicative of of the wider gaming world. And the answer is, tell me how many excited Call of Duty threads you see on gaming forums. You don't. You don't because that's, that's the bubble, you know. We're mm. we're here hyping like this latest indie release. Like uh, everyone talking about neon white on the Switch and on PC, mm. right? That's that's in this bubble. It is not going to be a, a, a thirty million seller game. It will probably be a game of the year for a lot of outlets this year, but it's it's not going to touch this other world out there. So. But yeah, it's enthusiasts versus the casual market. And I think Game Pass mm. is ticking that boxes. And look, Peppa Pig is coming next week. That's Mate. that's one reason to be excited. Right. I'm mm. excited. Um that's about it. And you it? know, sorry. That's about it now. That's it. That's it. You know, it's done. funny. I've I've seen a thread on Reddit pop up about the rumor mill already. Ugh. And I'm seeing people um He was wrong about Sly. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just seeing a lot of the replies and the guesses and all that sort of stuff. And it's funny, like, I'm wondering now if my guy got, because I said NIS America, and now I'm looking at Wikipedia on the publisher of this thing. And, like, 
it has a few publishers. <laughs> and NIS America is one of them. So I'm like, wait, I hope he's not getting mixed up. <laughs> no, they're the big so, one. That's why I'm, it's, and that's why I'm glad I didn't say the game because if I said the game and then the publisher was wrong, because you know how with some Japanese games you have a publisher for one region, a publisher yep. for another region, a publisher Pretty for normal. another region. Yeah, in this region, it would be NIS America. You're, you'd be correct. Would it? It should be. It's on their. I mean, it might be on their website listed as one of their games. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, now for the last. Thank God I didn't say the games because <laughs> that could have led to some trouble. Like I just. Yeah. The last anyway. tangent because I didn't get to discuss it with you last week. Uh, have you finished the boys? Yep. Yep. That was full on. Yeah. It ended a little bit funny, a little bit abruptly. Felt, it felt a little bit rushed at the end. Yeah, it felt a, the, the ending was a little bit abrupt, but still very good. Yeah. Very, very good. The best Love thing it. is someone who watched or who read the comics is it's so different. Yeah. I don't know what's coming, and I love that. Yeah. Because the comics so they didn't are different, but following the, the comics or the graphic novels. They're following beats. They're not following it like beat for beat, especially in some very big ways. But some yeah, of yeah. the overarching storylines are kind of happening. Yeah, because like I, if they were following it beat for beat, Noir shouldn't have died or anything <laughs> oh, like that. People are going to flip out. Spoiler. Oh. Hello. I'm talking That's about the spoiler. comic book. I'm talking about the comic book. Are That's you? not a spoiler. Isn't it? Well, if, not if you're talking about the comic book. Comic book's been out for 20 years or however okay. long. What about the film? Oh, I don't know. What? I don't follow the comic. I don't follow the comics. It's same as, the same as how I was asking Jesse before the show. Like in the comics, how do they explain female four? Uh, I don't know. That, it's not uh, that far off from the movie, but they're Is like Odin and all that are still, they're still alive. Cause you know how comics work and they just become their own thing. They can have whatever characters yeah. they want. There are characters yeah, yeah. in the MCU they can't have that were a part of the comics run, but overall, the overall themes of it are very similar. Yeah, but they had a specific, a specific explanation for how Jane became Thor. Yeah, it's which different I thought was than yeah, a bit. Eh, like it seemed very. Uh, we just thought of this yesterday, oh. and have, and that's why I was wondering how they did it in the comics. Because if that's exactly how it was in the comics, then fine, they copied the comics. But if that's not how female Thor is explained, I mean, in the it's comics, really, it's, what they came it's very up different with. from the comics. Okay, so my hunch was right then. It, it felt yeah. very, we just made this up last week. They had the more characters to use tied to it still alive in the comics because you, you can have whatever yeah. you want in a comic run. Because when I, like I've said it on the show before, when I first saw Natalie Portman as Thor in the trailer, I was like, how are they going to explain this? That's why I, my instinct was multiverse because multiverse no, it's it's, it's very it's not far off the comics they just don't have the same characters to sort of make it all happen but yeah. she's the it's it's pretty much her same story arc as um to begin with i'm just talking the specifics of how she yeah. came to be thor mm -hmm. I'm that very very specific. in the comic she was telepathically called by mjolnir to the moon i know that doesn't happen in the movie so it's pretty different there's an but element the same... of that that happens in the movie. Yeah. It's, it's different places and stuff. Yeah. It's not super far off. I'll say that. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. Comics are dumb and you can do whatever you want with them. Yeah, I know. I just, when I, when I, like, when I saw it, I was like, okay. Uh, to me, with the way the MCU is going, multiverse made more sense to me. They did. They do seem to be, um, the multiverse can get really messy and they are not going to use it a ton. I don't think, I think it's going to be, for reckon? it seems like they're basing the whole next phase on it. It's going to be used to introduce like X-Men and other characters. I think, I don't think they're going to constantly use it in everything though. They don't want okay. it to become too confusing. Okay. Fair enough. Hmm. That's a tangent anyway. We're, well, we're I look forward to seeing the movie. Hey John, you want to stay up for another four, five no, hours? No, no, it's, I am, oh. I am dead on my feet. I've been, this would be the best long. time to go play Ghost Runner. You'll kick that game's ass right now. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think it's, um, 
it's time for bed ladies and gentlemen so as always big thank you to everybody that's tuned in and watched it's good to be back on the air um we'll be back next week as normal uh maybe just the two of us if we try and that's about it i don't i don't have much more to round out the show it's been a very loose episode i feel very very unstructured but kind of free-flowing fluid oh man joe was a great host (laughs) yeah (laughs) bless him man he was so excited loved Mm. it loved it very wholesome but yeah, I wonder if uh, Sukiya did that news article for the release date of... He's got uh, a draft up. Since it wasn't an exact date, maybe we get some of the campaign info and stuff into it and flush it out. Yeah, out. yeah. Maybe we'll go back and pull out a quote or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Put in the clip of him getting excited. Yeah, super wholesome. But all right. We'll see you all, all, all next week, ladies and gents. Enjoy life and everything else. And uh, we'll see you next time. Ciao for now.